Can you hear me now? Can I have a thumbs up in the chat if you can hear me? I'm trying something different. I got some things. And you should be able to hear me. We're good. Cool. Okay. So I had this mic guy. I got this new mic set up here I'm trying. And I, I think I got down here a little bit late and I didn't. I connected it, but I didn't check the settings. So we'll roll with this. Can you hear me okay, though? Does it sound clear? Let me know. Sorry for the delay. Uh, Lisa, Gig Bell Toes, James, Pamela. Yep, yep. Good, cool, yes, and hi, Lisa. Okay, cool. Jeff, what up? All right. Like I said in the beginning, if you're not a lip reader, we this, this live could be very different than some of the other ones we've done. We've done all kinds of different lives here. We do educational stuff. We do topic-driven things. We've had debates on this show. We've had a lot of crazy things happen. When you're doing this for two years, two and a half years live every Sunday, crazy things are bound to happen. This week... As you know, I am a big, I talk about tipping a lot, almost at a nauseous, like an, at a nauseous pace. And customers get triggered. Um, they get triggered. They want us to stop complaining, talk to your boss, get a real job, just bring me my food. I don't have tipping. Tipping isn't required. Hey, some of these things are very true. Tipping is not required. Um, the whole real job thing, I, I'm not going to touch on. We'll get into that later, maybe. Um, complain to your boss. We don't. Really, we it's a gig app, so we don't really have a boss. But DoorDash can definitely do better. And I attributed DoorDash in this live. Who knows if they'll see it? Hopefully they do. You can do better. DoorDash. This is my message to you. This is what you fucking get. Let me say that one more time, for all the executives in the back of the room. Maybe somebody just came in with their little laptop. Oh man, this guy on the internet, we've, we've seen some videos, but he's, he's going wild tonight. We saw this video on Wednesday. He went wild on the customers. Hey, DoorDash, you get what you motherfucking deserve. I am not going at customers because I don't think you deserve going at it. I've gone at y'all. And I'm not the dude that's going to stand on the uh, pick a fence with a strike, with a uh, strike and saying, I want more money. Give us more money. I'm not going to do that. It's not me. The people that do it, do you? That's not me. I'll go to the internet and clown on the miserable clowns. I've already clowned on the company because they can do better, but I don't expect them to do better. Those are two very different things. Hit the thumbs up. So you DoorDash executives out there, you can do better. Like most big tech companies, regular retail companies, whatever, they always fight to keep their profits in their pockets. I would say 99% of companies in the history of this land has shown us that. So I don't expect much because I know what they are. This week, what I do expect is customers to know that and in knowing that, treat us with mutual respect. We're already, we're already hitting accept and doing things in our car for you. If you can't leave a tip, you are a miserable piece of And I'm inviting you on tonight's show to come up and tell us why you would spend your last $10 on DoorDash. Because I've seen some things, I've read some comments. And tonight's the night to, for you to explain to us. Because I am ready to give you a financial lesson. I'm here to help you through the YouTube algorithm. Maybe you're seeing this as a consumer. If you are that poor and broke that you can't leave your Dasher, your Instacart shopper, your Grubhub person, your shipped shopper, your whatever, Spark, whatever it is. You can't throw them a dollar or two. Read between the lines. The pin comment, the, the StreamYard link is uh, available. It is pinned right now at the top of the chat. The people that I'm, I am welcoming are consumers or people that have an opinion different than mine. If you don't have an opinion different, there's no value you, you can add to the first part of this live. So I respectfully ask you to wait till maybe later because I want to give consumers the opportunity to tell us how they feel. I go live every Sunday. I make video every day. The community knows exactly how Mr. Bet on You feels. DoorDash, if you see my video, you know exactly how I feel. I believe in personal responsibility. I don't believe in victim mentality. But when I make content and I'm complaining, I'm doing it because most people have issues with their job at some point. Sometimes we come on here as a community and we complain. We don't feel like it's okay. It makes us feel better. I've been very consistent with that. But I ain't no victim. But I think these customers 
play the victim when we talk about them and they get triggered because they are broke individuals or they're either broken the pocketbooks or they're broken the soul. It's one or the other. They're broke right here and they don't understand what kindness is. And we need more of that in this country right now. I, I might get, I might go on a rant later. If this live is long enough, I might lose some of y'all, but it's okay. We need more kindness right now, more and understanding than anything else. And if you are a consumer and you're that fucking desperate and broke and you spend your last dollars on some DoorDash and your excuse is, that's my last penny, your life is shit. You're making bad decisions, bad choices, you are entitled, and you don't deserve to use that platform to order food. Not one time. That's going to offend some people. I am very passionate. I never hold back. I will always be myself. You don't always have to like me. You don't always have to agree with me. But the truth hurts sometimes. So you triggered individuals, come on. I'm ready. I'm right here in the bed on your basement. A lot of people had a lot of things to say this week. Sometimes you got to take a step or two back before we can go forward. And my hope is we can have a good dialogue. And then at the end, we can say, hey, we agree to disagree. You're not going to tip. No, some of you might not bring in your food. This is why we feel this way. You tell me why you spent your last $10 and you thought that was a good financial decision. I want somebody to argue with me at that point. That's what I'm really looking for. I want to get down to the nuts and bolts of the psychology of individuals and their spending habits and putting my fellow community at risk to bring you a McDouble with fries and a Sprite that you don't need. And then you have the balls to say we're complaining and complain to our employer when you are sitting on your fat ass at home and we're bringing you something in our automobile. You don't need that McDouble with fries and Sprite. You don't need that Raisin Cane's. You don't need the Papa John's. You don't need it. More compassion, kindness, understanding, and logical thinking is going to move us in a better place. But when you mix a complaining DoorDash driver like myself with a miserable scumbag that doesn't have the intelligence and is ignorant, this is what you get, DoorDash. So I'm talking to DoorDash, and I'm talking to the miserable clowns tonight. Your boy's on one. Hit the thumbs up. Is anybody waiting? I don't see anybody waiting. Not too surprised. We'll give it a little more time, because I do have some topics. I do want to say hi to the chat. Who do we got in the building today? Sergeant Bricks, Diana, the Dashing Kid, uh, Michael, no giggity, no clout. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Brandon Diaz, Leo, Michelle, Michael, Scooter, the Jaded Driver, Big Car. What's up, brother? Thanks to all the channel members. Kualaya, hello, hello, hello. Uh, King, kind people are my kind of people. Absolutely. Absolutely. And listen, get gal, what up, what up? All right, I don't want to say in the chat too much because I'm feeling, I don't want to lose all my trends. I, I, I'm going to be looking to my left here. The StreamYard link is pinned. Come one, come all. Anybody is welcome. I'm looking for a consumer, a customer. If I don't get one tonight, I think I will. We'll get some. It's early. We're nine minutes in the show. I will get some. I'll talk to some people that I know outside, and we'll set it up for another time. But when I see a lot of people that have strong opinions, keyboard warriors, they hide behind an avatar, faceless accounts, people that have opinions, and they, they poke jabs at us. Real people like Gig Gal out here, a mom of three, no giggity, no clout, a content creator that's got big dreams, trying to do some big things. Myself and many others. Qualia out there, out in California, hustling. A lot of you part-timers out there doing this to pay down debt, help get your kids through school, college. And we got these motherfucking scumbags out here talking down to you and I? Oh, no. Mr. Bell on you is the kind of dude. I know this channel's big. We run a nice little show over here, but I'll come at people's necks. I have no problem. I don't need to be professional all the time because when I see people disrespecting the people that support my channel and they're trying to support families because their broke ass can't leave you a dollar, it's on. Sometimes it's on. We have to hit head on. And I understand most people will just, it's really easy to type in the keyboard. It's really easy. I put my government name and my face and my legacy on camera and stand behind everything. So if you want a part of that, you hit the link, you join the show, and you tell us why you don't leave a tip. And listen, I'm sure there's some good people that can make some great arguments. I am not, I, I, I get some of the arguments from that side. I really, 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 really do. I get it. But 
you're triggered because you know you're a miserable scumbag. You know you don't have kindness in your heart. You know that. It's a fact. Still waiting. The trainer in the house, what's up, what's up, what's up? Real Talk with Roy, you signed up for, you got to expect some people won't tip. <laughs> yeah, no, no, absolutely, Roy. I don't expect everybody to tip, but I'll tell you what. I want I want to ask y'all a question right now. I'm going to ask you guys a question. Let's think with our brains. Let's take emotion out of it. I'm an emotional guy sometimes. I'm super passionate. I bet most of you, I want you to put a one in the chat right now if you've been broke at some point in your life. Literally, you didn't have two nickels, you struggled to put, keep the lights on, you, you, you had a car repoed, you got evicted, you got, uh, you didn't have enough money for gas in your car, you went to the pump and put quarters in the car. I've been there. Right? We, we, a lot of us have been broke. I see a lot of ones, 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 ones. Right? That's a lot of Americans are broke right now. There's nothing wrong with being broke. And we sign up for these apps. We understand it's going to be all kinds of things, like Roy said, right? Part of it. It's all good. But I'm sure Roy, when he worked at Domino's, he delivered to some broke-ass people. He rolled up, and he knew exact. He knew he wasn't getting a tip. And I know Roy didn't feel good about that. Sometimes he felt okay. Sometimes he was like, whatever. Sometimes it made his blood boil. Sometimes he might have shook a soda. Because he knows he's delivering to somebody that doesn't need that food, that can make their life better. I want to help y'all, miserable motherfuckers. You can make your life better by taking one year off on the DoorDash app and not ordering food. Not everybody needs to have things delivered to them by this community of working people that are working hard out there for you, delivering things for you during the pandemic and doing all, bringing you these packages and delivering all your things and shopping and bagging and inclement weather. Not everybody deserves that service if you can't show gratitude, kindness, and love. Still waiting for somebody to join the show. So we've most of us have all been broke. I bet 90% of y'all have been broke. You can share in a story of being broke. Now let me ask you this question. I also know some of y'all when you when you had that time in your life. Because I've been there. I've ordered food or things. I was like, man, that's probably not a good financial decision right now. And that's why I'm in this financial decision because I'm making poor financial decisions. So to all the broke motherfuckers out there, stop ordering DoorDash and putting our livelihood at risk to bring you a quarter pound of a cheese, fries, and a Sprite. Stop. Stop. Just stop. Stop doing it. So I see Cowboy Courier, which I know, Cowboy, I love you, but I know you aren't part of this conversation yet. I see somebody named Cameron. I think Cameron might have been on the show, but I'm looking for people that are a consumer or people that don't tip to debate me tonight. Give me the other side. Or you can come on and you can give me the other side, even if you believe it, and we can play you can play devil's advocate with me. Should we stand out? Should we be striking? Should we strike? There's a strike I heard with the Reister community that happens it's happening on the 14th of February, Valentine's Day. They're gonna strike. Um, it's going to segment me into another segment here if, if I don't see anybody coming up. Nobody wants to talk to me tonight. It's fine. I don't expect miserable people to click a link at my beck and call. Doesn't I get it. It's a big channel. We got 300 people almost watching. I understand the bright lights. It scares a lot of people off. It's easier to be a keyboard warrior. Too many keyboard warriors. A lot of, a lot of people talk. There's not enough action in 2024 in America right now. A lot of people like to talk. A lot of people like to make content. Nobody likes to show action. We need more action. I'm trying to do that tonight. Spark a good conversation, a good debate, something that we can look back on and maybe we learn something from one another. Because I'm tired of broke, insensitive. So listen, broke means monetarily or in your soul, in your heart. I'm tired of broke. Broke is not just money. You could be a rich person in Ladue, St. Louis. In a million dollar house and you look down on a driver i'm not tipping him he's scum you're broke as well so i want to be very clear with my message here but i'm tired of broke people telling me how to act telling me what opinion we should have telling me i got to do something for you just go talk to your employer they should pay you more i pay these fees you know how the world works there's been too many viral TikToks. there's been too many people are informed don't act ignorant don't act ignorant 
okay? Kindness goes a long way. When you tip that driver, he's got more earnings for his family. He can spend it out and maybe service the job that you work. Maybe you work, you know, and it, that, that, that can in return give you more hours at your job. Kindness in the economy in America makes the world go around. Understanding, knowledge, and kindness, it makes these things happen. During, during the pandemic, a lot of restaurants closed. And I still, the ones that were open, I still gave them my business because I understood, hey, I want to keep this, I want to keep this family open. I want to keep these servers making money. I understand that. And I was able to do it. But if you're not able to do it, don't spend it. A lot of people come online and talk about their times are tough. And I see them with a little Stanley cup in their car. I'm coming in hard tonight. They got a Stanley cup in their car. They got a Starbucks, an old Starbucks thing there. They got a nice purse. They got the nails done. And they're talking about they can't tip. I see dudes talking about, I'm not tipping. They, you can tell they got a fresh haircut. They got a chain on. They're at least pretending like they got money. You will, you will stay broke in your soul or in your wallet if you continue to use services that are out of your pocket, out of your means. Pocket washing with JT. What's up? Thanks for the nine ninety nine, man. Based on the numbers, most people are living paycheck to paycheck. They are not in a financial situation to order food delivery. Facts, JT. Buy groceries and cook at home. Act your wage. Absolutely. That's what I'm saying, JT. And JT runs a great channel over there. Pocket watching with JT. I'm brother from St. Louis. Listen, that's what I'm saying. People are talking about. I'm not a financial advisor like you, JT. If you want advice, for real advice, go check out JT's channel. He does consulting. But what I'm, you know, what I know is based on my experience is if you don't got it, you don't spend it and don't pretend like you got it and then blame a DoorDash driver when we're like, damn, you can't tip, you can't leave a little love. Love makes the world go around. And then you complain and wonder why your foods go. You need to go to Aldi, buy you some sandwich meat, blah, blah. do that for one year. I'm telling you, I bet JT can back this. Change your financial spending habits with food for one year. See what it does for your pocketbooks. So when in 2025, when I'm doing this live, we don't have to argue. You could understand that, man, that, that Pedro dude in St. Louis, that dude with no financial degree, no nothing, man, he was right. Look how much money we saved, babe. Look at this. We can get out of debt. You broke motherfuckers are out here worrying about me making a video? You need to take care of your family. I take care of mine. Do you take care of yours? Because you complain, you make all these TikToks, and you're in the comment section like keyboard warriors. You're the broke one in the soul or in the brain. You're the one spending and wanting something for nothing you want it on the low low you want me to go get 166 items you want my brothers and sisters out there on instacart to get 200 items for you shop it bag it tag it find it lug it up to your apartment floor or whatever you live bring it to you and you can't show any love do you know how much money i just saved you even with the fees time is money baby i saved you money you were able to continue to work pick up your kids from school whatever i saved you money I saved you money. Appreciate that new member. No giggity, no clout. What's up, brother? How you doing, man? I saved you money. It's all about love. Listen, it's all about love. It doesn't take much to show love, but you have to show it to yourself. And I'll tell you what, the people that I hear in the comment section, the people making videos, the people making the TikToks, the people embarrassing my crew, my people that are watching right now, the hard workers out here making this country go around, trying to help you because clearly if you can't leave a driver a dollar or two or five bucks you don't need that quarter pound of cheese fries and a sprite it's a bad financial decision just like jt said get some groceries level up your finances do it for one year live within your means live within your means for one year try it it's my challenge to you broke people do it one year i've done it thanks for the 20 who's that i can't the chat's going real fast New member, get bell toes. Appreciate you, bro. It gets on the way, man. Uh, Junior's new corner. Uh, I place one dollars on every no tip delivery and say I dropped off your order. Thank you for your patronage. Since there was a no tip, you need this one dollar more than I do. I I get post tips like crazy. I mean, listen, I wouldn't recommend it, but if it works for you, I respect the hustle. You got some balls doing that. I like it though. Uh, I ain't knocking it, but be careful. Some of these customers might report you. Appreciate all the love tonight, y'all. Listen, I'm just speaking facts. And I haven't seen one customer yet that wants to come up. Because you know I'm right. You guys are triggered when us DoorDash drivers are 
complaining in our car. Some of us complain. Nothing wrong with that. But you're triggered because you know we're right. You know that you are broke in the soul or in the in the brain. And I get it. There are people that I've been there. I, listen, yo, I've been negative, bro. I've been negative in that bank account. I've been negative. You see that negative sign like, oh, it's red. It hurts. Been there. But you know what I didn't do? I didn't expect another human being to bring me motherfucking McDonald's when I was broke. Think about that for a second. I didn't expect another motherfucking human being to bring me McDonald's when I was broke. Think about that. Think about the logic behind that. How are you mismanaging your life and your family situation? If you're that broke and your reasoning for not leaving a dollar or two is because you ain't got money, but you expect somebody to bring you something that you don't need. The Mason Hustle, appreciate the $4.99. What you got? What you saying, bro? This is Pedro. I subscribe to the 2020 Pedro. Dunk on him. <laughs> Listen, th that Pedro never went anywhere, right? Sometimes he comes out. I try to be pretty measured, but sometimes he comes out. Pit stop, appreciate the $4.99. Just because we can purchase something does not mean we can afford it. The two are not always one and the same. That is a fantastic comment. And you know what? My man JT does the financial advice and going in on people. Way better than I can because he's certified to do it. But every once in a while, I'll drop some nuggets. Right? I'll drop some nuggets because at the end of the day, we have to start taking personal responsibility. I am a big advocate of that on this channel. I talk about it many, many, many times. I don't play the victim. I am not a victim. I look out for me and mine, and I control what I can control, and I'm aware of that. So I can hit that decline button. I can hit on the sign. I can control that. It's a mindset. I'm not a victim. I am not no app slave. If you think you're that, that's cool. That's where your mentality is at in 2024 of January. I'm not there. I am past that. These jobs are an opportunity, but I'll be goddamned if I'm going to use that opportunity and service a broke individual that's either broke here or broke here. I like to vibe and I like to exchange energy with good people. And lately, the keyboard warriors have been out. They've been tagging your boy. I've only seen things because they attribute me. So they want me to see it. They've been doing all kinds of things, saying we're complaining, saying we're doing this, get a better job, get a better job, get a real job. Man, you want me to listen. When people say get a real job, listen, I advocate for doing this part time or having the goal stepping stones. I talked about that in this community. Nobody else. I coined that phrase. If somebody else said it before me, it could have happened. I'm not aware of it. Better than you set goals one day at a time. That's me. That's him. I am him. H-I-M. You see this right here? That was made for me. Custom. That's who I am. I got a tattooed on my leg. I live that shit every motherfucking day. That is me. I am him in that regard. I talk about that shit every day. I do not and have never said you should do this full time. This is going to be great. It's going to solve all your financial problems. Absolutely not. More people that do this, the longer you do it, the worse you're going to be off sometimes. That's a fact. The longer you do it, your hamster on that wheel, it's going to be really hard for you to keep up that pace. You understand what I'm saying here? It's going to be really, really, really hard. But this can be a great way for some side income, side hustle. This ain't my full-time income, and I hope it's not yours. If it is yours, no shame. I hope it isn't. I hope at some point you're working towards something else. I know many of you guys are. Many of you guys have left this already. Many of you guys have left this. That's cool. And maybe you might have to come back. That's okay. There's no shame in this work. Because this is a real motherfucking job. But have a plan. We'll be working towards something. It don't matter what that is. Everybody's situation is different. A lot of you guys are retired. You don't need no plan. I'm Pedro, I'm 65 years old. I'm 70. I'm 80. I'm doing this for side money. Love that for you. That's why I advocate for these apps still. Because it could be really, really good. But when I see broke... In the soul, in the soul or in the pocketbook people expecting me to deliver you a quarter pound of cheese fries and a Sprite and a sweet tea, and you want me to do it for no money? And you got the boss tell me to get a real job? Where are you working at? What do you do for a living? Obviously, you need a real job because you can't afford a tip. And you're saying everything's too high. It's too high. Then what the fuck are you doing with DoorDash on your phone? Explain that to me. Makes no sense. DoorDash, if you're watching this, Stop trying to service every single person for the greed of your company. Because what you're doing is you're hurting some of my fellow men and women out here driving that are having to do these two and three dollars. Get to my next segment. Another issue, because I don't see any guests. Let me, oh, I see some people. Maybe, maybe somebody's here. Here to take out trash. I don't know who that is. I'm looking for somebody with a different opinion. But Soda, I know you don't have a different opinion. I can't help you. I don't know who Cameron is. There's no face there. So I'm looking for somebody with a different opinion. 
it doesn't look like I have any of that right now that's on the link. If you're a consumer and you are, if you are disagreeing with me, click the link. Let's talk. Maybe you can change my mind. Everybody else, I ain't, I'm not interested right now. Sorry. But like I was saying, another big issue that we're having right now, besides the most customers are great. I think 10% of you guys fucking suck. I think 90% of you are really awesome. The 10% of you, that's what I'm talking about. Y'all trash. You're trash human beings. You're absolutely trash. Stop ordering DoorDash and Uber and Instacart and expecting somebody to do something for you for free. Get the fuck out of my app. You are trash. You suck as a human being. I said what I said. I stand by it. I'll die on that hill. You are a miserable piece of uneducated trash that will never have financial literacy because you're using DoorDash when you that's your last $10. I said what I said. Walk your ass to Aldi. Point blank period. If you're offended, don't care. I'm hot tonight. Because another issue is the reason I think and DoorDash has to do something about this. Uber needs to do something about this. Walmart Spot needs to do something about this. I'm second generation. I was born in Chicago. My mother and father were born in Puerto Rico. It's not a state. Some of y'all think it's a state. It's not. It's territory of America. So I have rights here that maybe somebody that was born in Mexico or Ecuador or Africa or the Middle East doesn't necessarily have. But we have a lot of people that English is their second language. They're coming over. They're illegal immigrants, immigrants, whatever you want to call them. Okay. I'm, this isn't a political thing. This is These are facts, okay? If, you, if you're coming over for the, to this country for opportunity, I love that. I want you to come here. Let me say, I, 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 if you disagree with me on that, you can unsubscribe. Don't give a fuck. If you want an opportunity, this is the country to come because this is what that, that's what this country was founded on. In, well, kind of. <laughs> Ellis Island, at least. At least recent history, okay? So come. Opportunities can be plentiful. But the issue is we have people with fake accounts, we have people selling fake accounts to people that don't even have driver's licenses, cars. They're selling my and your information. My man, Luis Berti from Delivery TV is very passionate about this. I hope to have him on the show soon. I got to reach out to him. I'm sure he'll come on. He knows way more about this than me. He's very educated. His community is at the forefront of this. But we have a lot of people that are taking away your opportunities and they're just taking everything. And the companies know that, so they want them. And the consumers are starting to realize that. So they're like, I don't got a tip. I ain't got to tip nothing because this dude over here, this woman over here, this is their first job. They're happy to make $50 a day. That's a problem. It's actually a big problem right now in our community. Some of you guys know about it. Some of you guys might not. The, 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 the taking advantage of the less fortunate, uninformed, or maybe literate, or English isn't their language. And you got these people selling these fake accounts to these individuals. Now, I'm not saying if you're from another country, you can't do DoorDash. So don't 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 get it twisted. That's not what I just said. If you understand what I said, you understand what I said. But that's the issue as well. So when you when you couple that with the miserable 10 percent customers that want to talk shit on us, those are really the two biggest issues we got. Everything else is easy. This job is fucking easy, man. Let me tell you what. This is the easiest way I've ever made money. And some of y'all might be like, <gasps> this is the easiest way I've ever made money. Besides, YouTube is pretty easy, too, actually. But that's completely different. This is easy, man. Pick up, drop off, pick up, drop off, pick up, bag, get in car, turn, key, drive, GPS, tells me where I need to go, drop it off, take a pick. Get the fuck out of here. It's easy as shit, okay? My nephew is 16. He got a job. First job. Won't tell you where he works. He's doing his thing, though. Proud of him. Proud of him. Fine young man. Plays baseball. Awesome kid. Shout out. His name is Santiago. His first name is my last name. Shout out to my nephew, Santiago. I love you, bro. I love you. You are the next legacy of this family. You're doing great things, man. So very proud of you, my nephew. I love you so very much. So very much. He's 16. He could do this. And probably in a month, do it just as good as me. He wouldn't be making much less than me. This job is easy, guys. But the things that make it hard and frustrating is these customers and these companies allowing these things happening to, to make our job easier. Because this is easy. This is so easy. But when you have these 10% broke-ass motherfuckers out here, these are the ones that make our job difficult. The deactivations, the bad information, the no no respect, the no delivery drop-offs, the no gates. These are all the same people that don't tip you. I don't want you to face me tonight and tell me why are you a broke-ass piece of shit. You broke in your soul, in your heart, when you broke in your pocketbooks and you decided your broke ass woke up and said, I need Starbucks. Your broke ass woke up and said, I need Starbucks today. 
and I ain't got no money to tip. This, this coffee's costing me $10, Pedro. I can't tip. Take that $10 and save it. Get a bus ticket. Think about two twenty five dollars in St. Louis. If you don't have a car, get up, get on the bus. Go to your local Aldi. We got Aldi all over the place. They're all over the place. Get some Cafe Bustelo. Get some whatever you want. Get a brick it at. Get a bag of sugar. You can have coffee for the next month. So instead of ordering at Starbucks every day that you order for $10, Cost you seventy dollars a week. There's so many all motherfuckers out there. Look, look how much money I just saved you. Plus, Starbucks is mid. Starbucks is trash. They're a horrible company, and the coffee's mid. It's trash. If you like Starbucks, I'm sorry, you're offended. Starbucks is trash. They don't even taste good. Anyways, people want it for the cup. They want they want people to know that they have Starbucks and it's the mermaid. It's all. That's all. It's the only reason. Starbucks is trash. I can make you better cup of coffee. Trust me. So that's what you need to be doing. I want to give you financial tips out here. I'm not a financial planner, but I can help you in 2024 because your broke ass keeps ordering DoorDash and not leaving my people some love. Fuck a tip. Take the word tip out of there. Take it out. It doesn't mean anything. Love, gratitude, kindness. Show it to yourself. Look in the mirror and say, damn, I can't spend this $10. I don't have it. <laughs> that's what's part. That's what entitlement is. The number one issue in America right now. You could, we could debate on that too if you want. Entitlement is the number one issue in this country today. And the people that we're talking about tonight are entitled and broke. I, I see a lot of people saying they're struggling. I've talked about this many times on this channel in shorts and lives. I know we it's not easy to live in America. Inflation is on a rise. Rent is up. Cost of gas, houses interest rates. I understand these things. I live in the same fucking country you do, but I see a lot of people complain and do nothing about it. Most of us have the answer in our everyday habits, and we choose not to sacrifice because of our entitlement. Most of us have the answer in their everyday routine. We choose not to sacrifice and to make our life better because we are entitled. Who? Somebody please tell me I'm wrong. I'm waiting for somebody to come up here. I got nobody that wants to tell me. I, I, I'm not always right, guys. Somebody come on here right now and tell me I'm wrong. Who we got in here? Let me see. What, let me read the chat. Let me read the chat. Good gal. What's she saying? I sometimes think I'm not doing enough because I still struggle. But then I remember that everyone I know is struggling too. A lot of people, most people are struggling. But get gal, let me ask you this. You got three kids. So your situation is different than mine. I'm sure it is. I mean, I'm not a mom, number one, and, I'll, and I'm, I'm caring for one child, now, not three. So your situation is different. But we both work the gig economy. We're both content creators. My challenge, and don't have to answer in the chat, this is me talking to gig gal plus anybody else that's, that, that this might be relevant for. And I'll include myself because I could spend better as well. I bet there's some things you can probably spend better to where at the end of that month, you, you might feel better. I know it. I know it. I don't know it. That's wrong to say. I think it, I think it, we need more of that for each other as, as gig workers. We have to help start challenging and motivating, inspiring and showing each other that it's rough for a lot of us, but, but sometimes we have to look at how we're spending our money. I really believe that. I do. I believe that. My kid turned 20 today. I dashed for only an hour. Happy birthday, God's Pirates kid. Jada Driver says, so does February through December. I don't know what that means. Uh, I do Spark full-time and DoorDash part-time, making it work. Chelsea says, minimize. I agree. Absolutely, man. We A lot of us live in excess. Let me tell you something. Let me, let me tell you something. I'm going to throw myself under the bus right now. I like to have certain little things. We all got to give ourselves treats. I'm not telling, I'm not saying eat ramen every day for the next year, guys. That's not healthy either because your mental state, you have to reward yourself. But you have to budget that in. How many of you guys got a budget? You have a budget? You broke-ass motherfucking customers out there. You got a budget? You got a budget? You got a budget? And if your budget, if you're that broke, you got a budget, and then your budget is DoorDash? Something's wrong with you. Throw it. Listen. If you have a budget and part of your budget is food delivery, throw that motherfucker away right now. 
right now. Look at this. Throw it away right now, please. Throw it away right now. If, if that's in your book, throw it away. You don't get that. I'm giving you some tough love, y'all. You don't get it. You don't get it. You do not get it. The entitlement should not come when you are trying to budget and, and, and level up your finances. You cannot be entitled and be broke. You can't. It, you, you cannot. You can be entitled to kindness from other people, kindness from your spouse, your kids. You can't. You, you're not entitled to a quarter pound of a cheese fries, a sweet tea, and a Sprite. You are not entitled to that. And the, the more that you get less triggered from Mr. Bet on you telling you that in a video or a short or a live, the better 2025 is going to be for you. Okay? It's just a fact of the matter. It's just a fact. Cray Cray, what's up, Cray Cray Nay? Good to see you here. I'm happy you're here. I see Cray Cray everywhere. She's one of the number one, I say, supporters of a lot of channels along with Bud Soda. She's all over the place showing love. Appreciate you, Cray Cray, the Gig Wars team over there. I'm going to try now. Uh, Tony's in the house. What up, Tony? AR don't matter. Maybe it matters. AR matters. I don't care what you say. In some markets, it matters. I can say that as a fact. In some markets, acceptance rate matters. That is a fact. If you don't think that, you're still, you're still in 2020. Let's see who else we got in here. Cruising. What up, what up, cruising? Well, I, uh, Porky, what's up, what's up? Ryan, what's up, man? How you doing? It doesn't look like we're going to have, let me see. Exit delivery drive. Evil delivery driver. Sean Kingston. Who's <laughs> Sean Kingston? <laughs> All right, listen. I'm going to bring, because these might be, these might be customers. So I need to I need to bring them up because I don't know I could be wrong, but if you are so Sean Kingston and Ex I need to see your face. You don't have to just show me your face. I can see it, and then if you don't want to show it on the screen, that's fine. Okay, I see one. Okay, I see who Exit Delivery Driver is. I'm gonna bring that person up because I want to hear his perspective because we don't always agree um, on some things, but I want to hear what he what his take is, whether we agree or don't agree. I want to hear what his take is, and I want him to bring the fire, and bring the passion. Okay, so I'll bring him up on the screen here. Just one second. Um, oh, I missed the super chat. John, what's up, bro? Animal style. Appreciate you. Hey, bro. Stop leaving the thirst traps on your community posts. You're looking good, man. Them ladies out there in your comments, I bet. How you doing, man? I miss you, bro. I got. I think I'm gonna be out there in February, so I hope to see you in Kualaya, uh just in about a month. Get Gus says I'm at 28. I've been scared to turn door down. <laughs> I respect that. All right, listen. I'm gonna bring somebody up right now. And I want them to, I want, I want to hear their opinion on this, whether they're playing the devil's advocate side or they're playing the side of these miserable motherfucking customers need to be, make better financial decisions. We need more personal responsibility and less entitlement. I'm telling you, we need that. And for me to say that, because I'm a little entitled, I'm a little bougie sometimes, y'all. I am. But I, I earn that shit. I work hard for mine. I'm not some lazy person expecting somebody to deliver me a quarter pound of cheese, fried, a sweet tea, and Sprite for zero tip and then like expect me to do all these crazy things for them and da, da, da. no you don't deserve that because you're broke here or in your wallet if you're triggered come on the show let me bring uh this person up real quick uh let me see let me make sure i can do this let me go there all right who do we have with us tonight uh it's the evil delivery driver if you recognize the evil voice keep delivery the name. hold on evil delivery yeah. driver let me turn my uh, uh hold on Keep keep if you recognize the name, keep it keep keep it on the low. It's the evil delivery driver. Because my phone's acting a little weird, I can barely. Hold on. Okay, I can hear you now. Yeah. Evil delivery driver. What's that? So, tell me what I have said that has been wrong tonight, right? Give me your take on this. Am I fucking crazy? Am I being am I what? being irrational? Like, give it to me, man. I have no idea who you are. Give it to me. Well, first of all, I'll I'll say it from I'll, I'll look at it from a customer's point of view. This is something you guys signed up for. You signed up to take whatever deliveries are handed to your phone. Yes, you have the option to decline them or accept them. So you know these apps do give the customer a way to take away a tip. You know this. You know that they sometimes will encourage people not to tip. We've seen that. We'll wait till after the delivery to do a tip try to do things like this. They even offered or gave options and reminded people to tip. But mm -hmm. at the end of the day, remember personal responsibility. You signed up to the app. So if you're dumb 
If you're dumb enough to take a 325, you should not be one of these people in the fucking chat complaining about no tips. That's another thing that rubs my balls with some of you delivery drivers. I am passionate. I can't stand human fucking trash that don't tip. And you've probably had to deal with that more than me, I'd say. Yes. And I you have no choice. Have. You, you guys have the fucking choice to decline the offers. And I still see people whining and bitching. Oh, 225, 225. You take the motherfucker, that's on you. You shouldn't be in there bitching and complaining about trash humans. Because in my opinion, you're part of the trash. If you're encouraging trash ass people to not tip by taking their fucking McDonald's, you're part of the trash. You need to be taken out as well because you're encouraging some of that shit. Yes, they have the option not to tip, just like you should not be even taking that shit in the first place. Any delivery driver I see waiting at McDonald's for $2.25, you're trash to me because you don't have no self-worth in your fucking self to decline some fucking dude $2 fucking order. Now, I am also in the opinion that, hey, you got to do what you got to do to survive sometimes. But come on, $2.25. Nope. You can you can wait five minutes for at least a $3.25 goddamn cent, at least a dollar tip. But if you're helping to encourage the garbage, then yes, you are part of the problem. And then on my side, I can't stand human fucking trash, period. Anybody that asks another human being to do them a favor and then want to sit there and not show any gratuity or love to that person, yes, you are fucking garbage. You are, I, and I don't fucking, and when I do my deliveries, I do not talk to these people. I don't say hello. I don't, because I have to deal with them on the regular. I'm talking, I see the same fucking piece of shit non-tippers day in, day out, months at a time. I have to see these same people. So I know who doesn't tip. I don't even speak to these people. They get no fucking hello from me. They get no goodbye from me. They get nothing. I would not talk to my fucking trash can at home. I sure the fuck ain't going to talk to a piece of trash talking to me. So, yeah. So if you're one of these people that think that we're broke, obviously you're fucking broke. Because if I can afford a car, car insurance, repair bills on my car to bring you your fucking food, and you're going to sit there and call me broke? No, you're the broke fuck. Like Pedro says, you're the broke fuck, not me, because I can afford a car. If you can't afford a car to go get your own fucking food, like he said, you should not be ordering fucking food or get your ass on the fucking bus, get a monthly bus pass and go get your own fucking McDonald's, period. But don't ever call us broke when we're the ones pulling up in our cars because your sorry ass can't make a good financial decision to have either have your own car or make a decision what's more important, my light bill or fucking McDonald's, and then call us broke. You got big balls to do some shit like that. You're the broke piece of shit. You shouldn't be ordering fucking food if you can't throw one, two dollars, three dollars, whatever the fucking case may be. I can't stand those fucking people, bro. I dead ass can't stand them. I can't. Listen, I, I hear you. I need the chat, the chat, the chat. Some people in the chat think this was staged. Is this stage? It ain't fucking stage. It ain't fucking stage. <laughs> it ain't fucking stage. I, 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 I dead ass it ain't staged. I'll tell you right now. This is no fucking joke. <laughs> I'm no fucking... And anybody that knows me, if you know who I am, like I said, hopefully you keep, the, you keep it on the down low, but you guys know how I am. I will fuck your sodas up. I will flip your food upside See, down. And that's what I will, listen, hold up. That's what me on, and man. you... That's what me and you do. Yes. Yes, we do differ That's in that respect. We, we, yeah. we definitely differ there. We definitely differ there. But yeah. but you've obviously been doing this kind of work longer from what, you know, and it, so your perspective's different. I think you've delivered more non-tippers than I have. I'm, I'm assuming you have. So I think you just, you know, it's different for you. But yeah, I listen, I just want to say, I don't condone, <laughs> I, I wouldn't shake a soda or tip, or tip over a pizza or shake or whatever. I wouldn't do that. But that's just, I'm a karma guy. I believe in karma. Maybe you don't. That's just me. I just, I feel like if I do that, I'm going to, you know, something's going to happen to me bad. But I'm with you on the whole, like, if you can't afford it, yeah, you know, we're not the broke ones you are. Like you said. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> I mean. Exactly. Yeah. You know, you, you, I hear so many fucking excuses. Like, I, I had a delivery, what, a week ago. Yeah. The bitch, 
the bit said, oh, I'm usually a good tipper. And that's another thing. If you're going to sit there and you're going to tell somebody you stiff that normally I'm a good tipper, I got to wait till my paycheck, you, you're a piece of shit. You don't tip. We know this. The people that say they're some of the best tippers are the no tippers. This is through my experience of eight years of doing this kind of work. If you're going to sit there and brag about people how much you tip, you don't tip. Yeah. I can fucking guarantee that. And we yeah. see that shit. You people do it. And I'm coming from the W-2 world because we deal with it probably 10 times worse than you DoorDash people because we deal with it every day. We see it a lot of the same people every day that expect to be privileged. And, you know, at least you guys have the option to not deal with these people. I have no choice. I have to go out and deal with these dickheads and see them every week or every or once a month. Same with servers in restaurants. They're busting their ass to pretty much, let's fucking face it, to kind of be a slave in some respects to be nice. De delivery drivers and waitresses and waiters, we are some of the most, we can be some of the, we're some of the most giving type people. We're doing something for somebody else that we don't have to do it for. You know what I'm saying? And to sit there and think that, Oh, I can now they could just get my drinks for free. Man, fuck you. You are garbage. You know, I hope you I really hope if I had the power to force choke motherfuckers on their food that don't tip, I would do it, bro. I'm sorry. Karma can get me later on down the road. I don't give a shit, bro. These people could choke on a chicken bone for all I give a fuck. Because that 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 they're just trash to me, bro. Big time trash. I don't get it. I don't get how. Like you said in one of your videos, you 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 give your buddy uh, uh, five dollars for gas to go get your fucking weed, but you won't give your man bringing you substance for your family a uh, fucking five dollars. Like what the fuck? Hey, man. Yeah, the I mean fuck back, back, back in the day, we've all been there where you had to have somebody take you to the mall or up to your job or run you to the store yeah, to get some cigarettes. Exactly. You know, like if you're a kind human being, like if that's your really good friend, like maybe you know. But if it's like if you keep doing that, if you don't offer that person a couple dollars for the for for Petro and the Metro, you're trash. Like you're not kind. You're 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 broke in the soul. Like you know, I wouldn't expect somebody to to run errands for me and not show them some decency and put some gas in their car. You know, I just yeah. wouldn't. You know, I you know, I it's just it's just weird. And I think the entitlement, like I said earlier, uh, I think I think a lot of people are just entitled. We become lazy and entitled, and we expect yeah. everything. And everything's fast now. You get Amazon, whatever you want, the next day, and we you know. We expect everything so quick, and it's just it's making us like it's it's, it's the entitlement is just getting worse, man. I can't I can't stand entitled people, and I, yeah, I want to understand them. I want to understand yeah. them better, right? But like but at the end of the day, it's just but it, you know, I don't I don't know. Yeah, if I but, ever will. but look at the pandemic situation. A lot of people, all these same people that choose not to tip now, were tipping back then. What the fuck do you think has changed? Still yeah. using my own car. I still risk my health because I'm dealing with dirty ass fucking people's door handles. I don't know whoever answered that door going to cough on me and get me fucking sick. Um, yep. I had a friend that I used to deliver with at my W-2 job that was killed doing fucking DoorDash. He was T-boned in an intersection and killed. All, all because somebody wants a double cheeseburger, man. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, And, yep. and that's the thing. And so I'm going to ask you this last question and I'm going to bring somebody else up, but okay, cool. what's your opinion on this? So, you know, I talk about, you know, we talk about these no tips, like two, three dollars. We should never take those. You just reference if you're doing a two twenty five, that's on you. Right. We, you know, and I, exactly. I, I mostly agree with that. Right. But you uh, mentioned your friend, which I didn't know that. I'm sorry. That's, that's crazy. Right. But you mentioned that. So even if that order's twenty dollars, if that's still tragic, right? Like it isn't at that yeah. point, the tips irrelevant. Right. But yeah. at the end of the day, we're all just trying out here. It's like risk first for war. Like, okay, we look at the mileage. How long is it going to take me? It's worth my time. And if something happens, we understand that's part of the job. Like we, you know, we're putting our safety driving is one of the most dangerous things you can do in this country. It literally is one of the most dangerous. I'm surprised we don't see more accidents of gig economy workers, right? Ride share or food delivery. But let me ask you this, like, what could should the company even do something? That's where the customers are telling where they should just pay you more. Because at the end of the day, like if something bad happens, regardless if there's a tip on there or not, we're putting our lives at risk. So even if it's for twenty bucks or two dollars, to me there's no difference. So should the company come in and do something, or should they not? Yeah, but see the co the the company could the company do more? Of course they could do more. Of course, 
But why would they do more when you have these trash individuals willing to take the two dollar orders? If you if you got these people, like you said, doing it illegally off of legal pla uh, legal accounts, they're here illegally. They don't give a fuck. They're gonna take that. They'll take that fifty cent. If DoorDash dropped it to fifty cent tomorrow, people are still gonna be out there because they know these people are hurting for money. So they're going to take advantage of you. It's no different than any W-2 job. They will take yeah. advantage of you. If they can hire somebody to do my job for fucking $4 less, trust me, they will kick me to the curb and hire that person for $4. Yeah. So, right. yes, can they do more? Of course. But are they? No, because people are enabling these companies to get away with this stuff by doing this. You know, you got people in California that went the extra mile and got their Prop 22. You got the people in New York that went that extra mile. And I see all these people bitching and complaining that in this chat, all these delivery drivers bitching and complaining, I make more, I don't make enough, I want more tips. But I can guarantee you not one of the, probably less than 2% of these motherfuckers have done anything to try to get their specific community together and try to get things changed in their city or market that they are currently working in. They, you know, then that's another thing that makes me laugh. They all bitch. Well, California's got Prop 22. They're special. Well, why don't you get off your ass, get a hold of your community and your drivers, your rides, your drivers, your drivers, and why don't you try to start working for yourself to get something better for you instead of worrying about what the fuck California is doing? So really, all these people that are bitching and complaining, do something about it. Get off your ass and go look at your legislators. Go say, hey, we need to talk about this. We need something done to help us out because we're being taken advantage of. You do it. Do it. If, if, if you guys are that passionate to come on Pedro's and complain, these motherfuckers suck, DoorDash sucks, I need to, to do something about it. Start showing DoorDash that you're serious and that you want fucking change because taking $2 orders ain't going to make DoorDash fucking change. I'm sorry. Ain't going to happen. So I agree. I appreciate your time. What, what was the name? Not about e Evil Delivery <laughs> Driver. Have a good night, man. <laughs> Ever, yeah, I, you guys have a good one, man. All right, All right bye. I'm going to bring up, uh, I see some other people here, and maybe it's somebody that is wanting a customer. Like, listen, we're, that person just went in a little harder than I did. He, he went, like, the next level up, right? <laughs> but I, he's not wrong. Am I wrong in saying Personal responsibility. If you're broke, you don't get DoorDash. That's really what this is about. You know, that's really what this is about for me. I want us, I want to see my community doing better. I want to see people thriving more. I want to see people getting out of a apartment building that's dangerous, but that's all they can afford. That's what they think they can afford. A lot of us have opportunities that are in front of us and we don't take them and we wonder why things aren't different i believe that and i don't want to be preachy to y'all everybody learns things and goes through you know i'm a 42 year old man listen i didn't learn it i didn't really it about when i got to about 35 is when i really started looking at money a little bit differently so i was way late to the game trust me but once i understood my movements and my spending on a day-to-day -day basis is that's what's keeping me in the position that I'm in and, and how I'm managing my time with that. I'm coming from a place of experience. I want y'all to hear this message. I want people to do better. And all you broke people out there complaining about us, y'all don't need to be ordering DoorDash. It's that simple. If when you get to the, the dash thing, it's like, oh my God, that's too much. Stop. Don't hit don't hit go. Okay, whatever the don't do it. Financial responsibility is what we're lacking. That would entitle me to issues. Thunder, appreciate the 10, man. Appreciate that, man. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for the $10, Thunder. Appreciate that. We have to start taking that personal responsibility, man. We got to tighten up them belt buckles, man. People have had to do it for a long time in this country and around the world. We got to do that. We got to do that. Let me share a quick story, and then I'm going to let a couple, another couple people up. When I worked at the casino, okay, I left the casino. What is today? It's been almost like I, three years. My last day was January 4th or 5th. So this week marks the three-year anniversary of me. I'm out. I'm going to do something else. I'm going to bet on me. And I said, right, one year, I'm going, to, I'm, going to, I'm going all in on myself, my health, my soul, my body, my mind. 
and YouTube video every day for a year. I had like a thing, five things I want to do. I'm do them all for one year and I'll see where I stand after a year. Worked out for me pretty good. Made some mistakes, but overall, I'm, ec 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 I'm ecstatic with the decision that I made. But when I was at the casino, we had a lot of people from all, all over the world, parts of Africa, and we had a lot of people from, um, oh my God, I'm, I'm, it's Asia. Um, I can't think of it now. It's not Philip. Oh, it's, it's escaping me, but parts of Asia and Africa. All of our stewards, most of them were from Africa, and then we had a lot of people from, I can't, I can't think of the place in Asia. They were Nepali, Nepali. They were Nepali. Great people. I love my, I love them. I love all, I love all, I love everybody, right? Appreciate that, Bobby. People that don't tip are disrespectful, no values, facts. Uh, Bob, absolutely. I think that's Bobby. Bob, absolutely. Thank you, man. But he's speaking the truth. But what I was saying was, they came from all the parts of the world, came here, working, taking care of their families, all that stuff. And you'd be amazed. There were times when we'd have extra food at the buffet or one of the outlets I was managing. And, you know, we weren't, we, we didn't make it a routine to let people like take extra food home because you just don't do that. But that's a whole, that's, there's a lot of reasons for that. I hate wasted food, but there's, but there were times when we would, you know, let them take things home with them because, you know, why not? And the look on some people's faces, regardless of where they're from, was like, oh, I get that. This is like, this is a great meal of the day. So I think of those individuals, they ain't ordering DoorDash because they don't have it. They understand that's not where they're at in their life right now. But we have all these entitled people in my community, on YouTube, keyboard warriors. I don't got to tip you. Just bring my Chipotle bowl. Fuck you. I don't have to do shit. You need to go and make you a sandwich. The reason you're so miserable and you're not kind is because you're broke. Money is a big stressor. Big stressor. You're broke in your soul and you're broke in your pocketbook. It's because you're misspending your money by ordering DoorDash and expecting Mr. Bet on you, expecting Bobby, Gig Gal, Sergeant, Michael, Not Sure, Daniel, Johan, Levitating, expecting us to do you a favor. Get the fuck out of here with that noise. We ain't doing you no favors. Appreciate four ninety nine. Decent tip, no trade. Gene, thank you. I saw your comment. Gene, Gene is a, a customer, guys, and she's a great one. Craig, Craig, appreciate that. Member for seven months. We, the people of the gig economy, reserve the right to decline any and all no tip offers. Go get it yourself. Facts. Let me put that up on the screen. That's a fact. That is a fact. And the same way you have the right, you don't have to tip. And listen, it's going to be a while before I make another. I've, I've talked about tipping way more than I want to, but I'm, I want to, I, I want to go to battle with these people, or or I want to learn. I want to learn from you, or I want to battle. I want somebody to come on a show, or somebody say, Pedro, man, I, you know, because this it's got to happen once, I guess. Pedro, I just listen. I needed that, or I was a mom at work, and my kids needed some food. This is, I had ten dollars on this card. I get it. I'm empathetic to that. I get that. That's a reality for some people. I get it. That's the key. 199. Appreciate that. Appreciate that. I get it. I know there's situations and we just don't have to take it. You know, and, you, and hopefully someone will bring it to you and then the company pays more and then everybody wins. Your kids get the food, whatever. You get your food. DoorDash paid the driver more. It was worth their time and we good. You know, so I understand there's situations like that. I understand that. I, I do. But my question is still. What, and what my what my opinion that I believe is valid is, if you only got ten dollars on that card, right? And no emergencies happen, you, you can do better than spending it on DoorDash. That's my point. If you're broke, you shouldn't be you should not have the DoorDash app on your phone, because if you're broke, that might be the reason why. If you have Uber and Instacart and DoorDash on your interface of your phone, if those are your apps. And you're, and you're ordering them too often, that's why you're broke. I, didn't, I don't have a, 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 I'm not a certified financial planner, but I'm not a fucking idiot like you. That's why you're broke. You're ordering these services that are very expensive and you're living a champagne life when your ass needs to be drinking some Bud Light. There's nothing wrong with Bud Light. Ain't nothing wrong with some ramen. Ain't nothing wrong with making a PB&J. I like a hot dog. These things don't cost money, guys. When we when you go to the grocery store, I understand the cost of things is high. But there are some staple items that even when the cost has gone up, it's not crazy. 
I'm sick and tired of seeing people complain about the prices of things and they continue to not change their ways and buy Starbucks every day and this. Come on, what are we doing here? What are we doing, guys? Why do you have DoorDash, Uber, Instacart on your app? You just spent $200 this week on things that you didn't need. And then now you're like, fuck, babe, I can't pay the phone bill. Whose fault is that? What are we doing here? What's happening? What is happening to us? Is there a psych, is, are, are we mark, is the marketing teams in this country and the TV and the YouTube and the, the radio, are they, are they fucking with us? Is it, we're, we're being manipulated? Some might say that. Some really educated people might say that. I'm not that dude. I don't, I haven't done all that education to understand all how that works. That could be possible. Maybe we're, maybe we have no say in this at all. Maybe this is all a rigged game. Have no idea. Could be. Maybe we're living in a matrix. Have no idea. But I don't choose to worry about the things I don't understand. Like, I, I don't need to, like, dash your life. Appreciate the five, man. I just, I'm going to take care of my family. I'm going to adjust and, and buckle up the, the belt if I need to. They have caviar dreams with hot dog meats. Hey, <laughs> exactly, man. Read this comedy, y'all. They have caviar dreams. Listen, I love me some caviar, man. I went to uh, Kansas City about a month ago. It was a Chiefs game. We had a Gordon Ramsay's uh, restaurant. I'm not broke. I can afford Gordon Ramsay one time in my life. That steak was 90 fucking dollars for a steak. A la carte menu. That's a once in a lifetime thing with my brother. And I tipped the person because that I showed gratitude and love for the person serving me. And the person bringing my water and the hostess. That's what you do. That's how the world works. You show love. You spend some money and you show some love. But if I didn't have money, I wouldn't spend it. And my issue is the broke people that don't have it and still would go to Gordon Ramsay's with their last hundred dollars, and that's how they would spend it. Unless it's your last day on this earth, that's you're gonna you're gonna, you're gonna and you feel shitty and you want to feel good for an hour, you're gonna feel shitty next week again. What are you gonna do? You can't keep living like that. We have to break this cycle. Disable the DoorDash app on your phone. I want all. Listen, I'm gonna I'm gonna take some heat for this. I don't give a fuck. I want all the broke people in America. Somebody clip this. I want all the broke people in America. If you can't afford food delivery, disable the apps right now. If you can't afford it, disable the apps. Reevaluate your finances. And in 2025, I guarantee you'll be in a better situation. As long as everything else is the same. You don't lose a job. There's nothing crazy that happens. If everything else is the same, every time, de delete the app. And every time you would have that urge, take that money, put it somewhere. Whether it's cash or in a, an account, put it in another account. Don't touch it. Let's see how much you got in 2025. I'll tell you what, if you're a customer, I'll match it. Woo, Pedro just said that on the internet. Yep, I'll match it for you. Somebody clip that. I'll match it. I want y'all to do better. I'm tired of seeing you broke people on my, on my channel complaining. Tired of it. Financial responsibility. We can be mad at the companies all day long. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Do y'all like Tony? Fuck Tony. Fuck Tony. He's a skeevy little dude. He's running a business. All CEOs are trash, man. All of them. Every company. That's a big company like that. They're all trash. They want the money. They don't care about you and I. We're disposable. But what I do expect is my neighbor that expects me to bring them a quarter pound of cheese, fries, a sweet tea, and a Sprite. I expect them not to be trash. How can't you guys see that? I expect them not to be trash. Tony being trash, is that's part of the, the world. Let's all look at him and say, he's a piece of shit. He's trash. He could run a, a better company for us. Uber, Dara Karshawi, whatever, the Lyft guy, David Richer. They're trash. They could do better. They, all they do is talk. What I expect is my neighbor to be better than Tony, Dara, and David. And I'm, we're not seeing that. That's my issue. So it's not that I hold them guys exempt. No, they're trash. But they're a CEO. We're down on the streets. We're all ground level. We're all just me and you. We're all regular folks. I expect regular folk to treat regular folk better. Fuck the CEOs. They're not in my life, man. I don't, I'm never going to meet those people. I'm never going to be one of those people. Don't want to be one of those people. But I expect people that are with me, man, we got to rock together. And show love and gratitude to your driver is the way you can do that. And when you don't, you're a fucking clown. And I'm going to call you out. 
because you are the problem, not me trying to take care of my kids. You're trying to feed your kids, yeah, but you're being you're setting a really bad precedent by using a service you can't afford. You're showing your kids that you're a piece of shit. And I know some of y'all won't agree with that. I'm very passionate on this because I believe we need to take care of each other. That's how we can make things better. I don't expect some CEO to do shit for me. They're running a company, they got shareholders, and the rich are gonna get richer, the poor get poorer. I'm expecting us poor people, us middle class, us regular folk to take care of one another. And when I don't see it, I'm gonna fucking call it out. I'm gonna call it out. Plain and simple. I'm gonna call it out. Because we're letting them win. When you place an order in the app and you hit 0.00, DoorDash wins. I lose, and then you lose as well. Because either your food is going to be cold, and you're going to continue to stay broke. I can't make it any clearer than that. I can't. Your boy's got a headache. I'm like, all right. So I see people here. I think somebody, I want somebody to chop my head off right now. I want a different opinion. So I see, uh, okay, Joe. Okay, Joe, I see Joe. I'm going to bring Joe up because he's saying, boom, I'm going to bring him up. I want Joe to chop my head off. Joe, how you doing, bro? I'm tremendous. How are you? I'm doing fine. Bring it, bro. So, what do you got, man? So, What's your opinion? So here, here, here's the problem. I want to be nice and cordial because that's how I operate. But you've been cussing me out. Now, I know you're not cussing me out personally, but when you're talking about a DoorDash customer, I'm a DoorDash customer. I've sworn off Grubhub, so they're dead to me. They charged me double for three months where I was in the hospital. They didn't even use the service at all. I, I, I'll pay the three months, but not double. And they wouldn't give me credits. They wouldn't pay it back. So I said, they're dead. So I've been solid DoorDash. Now I'm in a nursing home. The food here is disgusting. I've been in hospitals and rehabs. The food's always fine. There's something wrong with this, the way they have food here, okay? And I to the point where I can't eat the food anymore. I've only been here a month and a half. Now I have, or, or DoorDash, but here's why. Because people, the, I have a stream as well. And it's just a line here showing the, the expose on what's really good and how I get treated, how I get talked to, and how I get abandoned and whatnot. Mm. So people, people, I don't really do much in the way of getting super chat or anything like that because I'm not on YouTube. But people send me DoorDash credits. Okay. And I really don't use it for much but coffee. But, I mean, I, I'm in Boston, Massachusetts. I'm not from here. This is where they ship me. I'm away from everyone. It's here by myself. I can't walk. I can't get out of bed. I've been bedridden for four years. Um, my only mission is to have a delivery service. Now, just a crazy question before I tell you what I want to say. You've had delivery other than DoorDash for yourself, right? You've ordered a pizza when you were younger, even now. Yes. And yes. You have, your whole life from the beginning of time, you've always tipped generously. Yeah. I When I was growing up, um, we didn't order a lot of takeout and stuff. But when I got to, I remember my first, First time I ordered something for myself, I was in an apartment. I was probably 18 or 19. I think I ordered a pizza and I remember tipping. I couldn't tell you what it was, but I always tipped. I had people that work service industry. So yeah, I, I, I've always been a pretty generous. What tipper. about the barber? Do you tip the barber? Yeah, I, I haven't, I don't go to the barber often. I got long hair, but I definitely tip my barber. Yeah, I do. I know. And those are a lot of iffy things. Now here's the deal. I was working for 25 years from when I was 14 until I was 40. I know that's, 26 but that's the math so yeah. <laughs> i would always eat out i was working nonstop. i would eat out i would eat different restaurants the best restaurants and when i did i would tip because it was usually a beautiful girl as my server and you don't look like much of a man if you don't tip especially a lady that's giving you free soda well then i'll give her the money that i want to pay for the soda anyways i have no problem tipping but yeah. here's my problem brother I've ordered DoorDash only a few times on other people's dimes, and that's cool. But when they screw the order up completely, I know that's not on DoorDash, but I mean, there's got to be some kind of checks and balances because literally I call DoorDash and they do nothing about it. I spend more time on the forward DoorDash customer service. I get nothing done. The simple directions. I don't know if the people out here are, are like, I honestly think the Special Olympics uh, candidates could do better. <laughs> because they're obviously not reading the instructions where it says, I'm bedridden, I can't walk, please bring it into my room. Now, I'm in, uh, I, so I'm in my room by myself. All you have to do is walk in, throw it on me, and run out. But yeah. these people, the biggest problem, Pedro, is that the people that work here, the aides, 
that would be the one to bring it from the front desk if they left it there. They leave my food and nobody can ever find it. So I always, if I do get food, I get it cold. And the, the owner is seldom right. DoorDash does nothing in the way of customer service to fix it. Here's the big question I have. I know you got, you'll got you probably have some comebacks for that because I'm on one side of the fence and you're on the other. So I'm just no, trying I, to do it. I like what you're saying. I appreciate your candor and I, I, I get your perspective and I appreciate the way you're delivering it. And, and I, I like what you got going on right now. I want to say that and thank you for coming up. But continue. I want to hear more. I want to tell you, though, this is going to hurt, but I will always put 0.00. .00. The only time I didn't, because here's my problem with this too. I can't tip before I get the service because nobody's ever, like, one person. I remember him by name. I remember him being amazing. I remember what I got. I, my memories are phenomenal, okay? So I remember the people that never show themselves, that left the food somewhere. Now, the people here don't do their jobs, so nobody brings it in. I have to call downstairs. Nobody answers the phone. I ring the call bell. Nobody comes to the room, and my food is cold. When all the asshole had to do is just walk in the fucking door and drop my fucking food in my lap so I can eat it somewhat as hot as could be. Being that, dude, I was telling you how I went out all the time. Well, now I don't know if I'll ever see it inside of a restaurant again. So mm -hmm. the likelihood of a hot meal yeah. is kind of really, really touchy as it is. And I know, you know, I got a little bit of cash. So if the service is so good, I haven't, I'm telling you, this kid, he went to McDonald's. And when he came in, he just helped me place my coffees up on the table, situated, made sure I was good. And I'm just, I'll never forget him and I'll never forget that experience. It was amazing. But then it was surrounded by nightmare experiences where I'm on the phone with DoorDash because we can't find the food. They say they're going to call the driver. They call the driver. The driver doesn't answer. And it's a big real, I'm already gone. I'm on to my next delivery. Now, my biggest thing for you, Pedro, my question is, should this shit be brought to the customer's attention? Because I'll never forget the first time because I was just eating DoorDash and my mouth is getting dry and I don't have to drink something. So I'm going to find something. Don't worry. Here's the deal. I was using DoorDash in the beginning and there was all the drivers were polite. I actually met my weed man. He was a DoorDash guy. He came into my apartment. He saw my pipes on my table. He goes, do you smoke? I'm like, yeah. He goes, open his jacket. And he's got edibles and flour and all. I'm like, he's boy to this day. So it was built on a DoorDash relationship. What I'm saying is there's a flip. Something happened. And now all of a sudden, all the DoorDash drivers have a negative mentality. I was putting this stuff in the YouTube chat so you can see some of it before I came on. And I was basically saying that it's almost like, what you're accusing us of, you're guilty of yourself. Not you necessarily, but maybe the thought process where we're entitled. No, I'm paying a fucking service. DoorDash more per item. Okay, I know that doesn't affect you. Like you said it, the, if I don't tip, then DoorDash wins. And I agree, DoorDash is always going to win because the house always wins. Mm -hmm. you, until, you, until you own DoorDash, you will always not win. You'll always be on a level of possibly winning. I have a friend that started and he swears by it. He doesn't do anything else. And that's all he does all day. And he's happy with the money he makes. And he has time with his family. And it's all. But what the fuck am I going to hear about it in my apartment when this guy comes in and he says, oh, well, you know, I got I got other deliveries. And, blah, 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 and, and I've had, it's in the instructions. Literally, it's written. And, and not one, they always call. Yo, your food is in the lobby. All right. Well, the instructions say I'm bedridden and I can't walk. Can you please bring it into my room? And my room number is there and everything, of course. I got a, I got a couple questions. Can I ask a couple questions? I have all the answers, Pedro. Okay. So, in your facility, is is are they allowed? Would he be allowed to come up, or would the desk maybe no, tell him? They are. They are so lax. You could come in here and kill me, and they wouldn't even know it. Well, that's 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 the issue. Okay, but now that I know that there's no barrier, okay, mm -hmm. I'll say this and I'll talk for the 330 watching. Appreciate y'all. Hit the thumbs up for our customer here that came on. He's one of one, so I appreciate that. Right, your situation is is a little unique. I think a lot of us drivers have. It's very unique. It, it's unique, exactly. Because I, I'll say this though: when we see, if you're saying that you always hit 0, 0.00, right? Most mm -hmm. of the time, a driver accepting that might realize that. So then they also see 
what we would consider a difficult drop off because now we have to do more work, which it's not hard, but it's some drivers think that'd be difficult. Oh, I got to go this. I got to go. Can I, am I going to be able to go up? Can I not? Okay. He wants I get to him in his bed. Yeah. Like people don't want to do that, but you know, whatever. Right. But, but if that order is only paying $2, why why would you expect me to bring it to your bed for for no tip? You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. like you get what you pay, for, right? So if I go if I need to get a new tire tomorrow, and I go to Dobbs Tire and Auto, and it's like a nice place with the lights are all good, I'm gonna pay more. If I go to the guy Rick down the street, I'm gonna pay less, but it's gonna take longer, and maybe that tire's not put on the right way, right? So the experiences you're having might be because you don't tip. And, and I have tipped in the past, and it's just now since I've been getting such despicable service, just I gotta take a sip of something real quick, dude, so I can talk like a normal person. We practice soda. Take a sip. Oh wow, Diet Coke, delicious all the time. When it comes from DoorDash, the ice is usually melted. I'm tired of drinking soda. I used to love fountain soda. The real problem here is my fault. The real problem is the fact that I lived 40 years as a man who did everything myself, could go where I want, what I want, never had to ask for what, what any price was because I could afford anything. So I didn't need DoorDash. Now my needs are different. Now I'm in a place where I know no one and everyone is my enemy, unfortunately, in this place because they get away with sitting around and doing nothing. And I have a brain and a mouth and I hold them accountable when everybody else is ready to die. Um, I'm trying to live. Unfortunately, it's here for now. But that's neither here nor there. I need a little bit of sympathy. I need somebody to realize that if you're delivering to a fucking nursing home, you're going to be dealing with somebody that's sick. And now my top problem with all this rhetoric that I'm hearing, especially from the evil dick guy or whatever his name is, is the fact that what did you do for work prior? Because if you were ever in customer service and this is your mentality for your customers, you don't belong in customer service. You belong in a factory. You belong doing general labor. You do not deserve to be in the presence of people that are paying for a service. Yes, DoorDash is winning. Yes, DoorDash is making more money. Yes, it sucks if you don't get a tip. But guess what? It's a numbers game. So, so what? Someone's waiting. Basically, if you don't get a tip, look at the next one will tip double. It's a numbers game, bro. Yeah, but we, you but, know, uh, listen, listen. You are, earlier you said at the nursing home, I think you said, correct me if I'm wrong, but the food isn't, it's not good, right? That's the word you no, it, this, this is, there's nothing. They steam the eggs. It's bread eggs. Breakfast, no, they I'm, don't I'm, clean the on. steamer, and then oh. they steam the vegetables at lunch in the same steamer without cleaning it. Everything is un inedible, inedible. So, so I, that's where I would challenge you and say, in my opinion, you fit into the entitled group. This is why you have means to actually eat a nutritious meal to get it's nutrients. not nutritious. It's and not, there's nothing nutritious about it. It's absolutely, I, I post every single meal online on Facebook and just so everybody can see. This no. shit is not fucking just edible. Because it, not but listen, just because it doesn't taste good to you doesn't mean it's not nutritious. It's not about the. It's what it's done to my body. I was fine before I came in here, and now my stomach is so sick every day. And well, my hold on. You're ordering DoorDash. Horrible. You're ordering Jack in the Box and McDonald's. That shit's worse. Here's the thing. No, no, no. Relax, brother. I don't get to order DoorDash. When I use DoorDash, it's just for coffee because I'll drink coffee from the hospital. I'll drink coffee from the convenience store. But this place tastes like they take the dirt from the street, put it in a coffee machine, pour water through it, and bring it to us. I will not drink it. I refuse to drink it, but I love coffee more than anything in this world. Listen, so I, hear I, you, have man. I I got my vices too, but you, you, you're you proving my point. And, and this is why I say that. You're ordering something that you don't need. It's not an essential thing. And you expect me to get in my car, use my gas, go up some stairs, wait for an elevator, to bring you a fucking coffee when you can't give me a penny. Hey, I don't expect you to do anything because you're the last fucking person that I would ever want to see come into this fucking room and rush me because you got four more deliveries long and your money's more important than your customers. And that's made very, very obvious. And I know that's why we go to work. And that's why the only reason some of us go is for money. But for 25 years, I did customer service. I put my customer service first and the dollar came after. 
I was taught at a very young age. Works. That's not how it works on DoorDash. And I've been in customer service just as long as you have. Trust right. me, man. So would you want to be treated? Would you want to be treated by somebody that you're trusting with your customer service that you're thinking in the way the evil dick driver is doing and thinking towards us, the customers? Knowing full well that, that we know that that's what's going on in your head. We know that's why, oh, our order got canceled or, oh, this happened or this came up. Or there's always something. Every single time I order from DoorDash, there's always something, an incident, something's wrong. It's constant. It's unbelievable. This is re this is recent, Pedro. It wasn't always like this. I, I swore listen, by DoorDash. I believe, I, I believe you. I believe you. have been a DoorDash customer for a long had, time. I believe you've had bad experiences. I think... Your situation is a little unique, but I think it's the reason is because when we ex when that dasher accepts that order, it's not paying shit, and then they see where it's going, and then they see that there's these instructions that say all these things, and we're, we're those dashers check out. Hey, now, so they I don't even read them, brother. They don't even read them. They don't even read them because they call me when they're downstairs, and I said, "Did you read the instructions?" They said, "No." They flat out say no, and then let me let you on one more little tip. I don't know where you're at. Are you in, let me guess, Saint Florida? Oh, I was way out. Where Rush Limbaugh's from? That's exciting. I love Rush Limbaugh. I miss him. But anyways, so here's the deal. What the fuck was I going to say? I'm excited about you saying St. Louis. Oh, I remember. So a lot of DoorDash orders that I had were out back where I was from before I got shipped out here. It was the Springfield, Massachusetts area. Now I'm in Boston. So there's a Hispanic out there. There's a lot of culture. Well, most of my DoorDash drivers couldn't speak English at all. None. Zero. I can speak Spanish, but they couldn't even understand fucking Spanish. So what world is this where you're going to come to my house and you're going to come? No, 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 no. And I said, you know, okay. <laughs> like talking, trying to speak Listen. Spanish, but I can't figure it out. And now uh, I can't get this person to figure out how to get in the door to get up the stairs, to give me the motherfucking food. I can't walk to get it myself, which is the reason why I'm using DoorDash. We can go around in circles all day, but I'm giving you multiple different scenarios why I agree it's not okay not to tip, okay? Because I used to tip double. There was times where my bill was $20 and I would leave $40 because I, was, I own a business. I have fucking money when I'm going out. That's yeah. the, the game plan to spend money. But in this right. situation, and I know you said it a million times, but the situation is unique. But you have to leave leniency when you're talking about this fucking customer is a piece of shit because they put 0, 0.0. And if that's the case, that you expect me to get in the car, I expect you to get in your fucking car because that's your fucking job. If you're going to punch in for DoorDash, then you're getting in your fucking car. Unless you're doing it on your bike or unless you're doing it on your feet. But you're going to have to make a move. You're going to do DoorDash laying in your bed. Trust me, I've been in a bed for four years. I can't deliver that's food to anybody. That's pretty wrong. It's not my job. This isn't a job. I, it's how we make money. Nobody's telling me I need to go up to your elevator, hit the button. So, so you're your own boss then? Yeah, there's no, we don't have, we have certain things within the app that we have to do, but I, you know, I can accept your order and see that there's no tip and see that there's instructions and maybe I don't want to go to that nursing home, whatever, call me whatever you want for that. But I can drop that and unassign it and somebody else might do it. But at the end of the day, you get what you pay for. And unfortunately, that's how it is in the world that we currently live in in 2023, 2024. You get the service you pay for. If you, like some people are saying in the chat, and I would challenge you, man, I, listen, you said people give you DoorDash credits. I don't know how that works. I'll send you some. If you, I guarantee, I guarantee if you get that coffee and you tip that person five bucks, I bet you have a better experience. Now, should you have to tip five? No. But because you choose to hit 0, .00, 0, 0 you're going to get a trash driver. The likelihood of you getting a trash driver goes up exponentially. Okay? That's just the way of the world, unfortunately. I don't necessarily like that, but that's how it is. That's how it is, right? So you talk about you wouldn't want me to walk in and bring you to – you would, actually. I have fantastic customer service skills because the people that I serve are respectful of me. And I believe – But then you're fake. But then you're fake. Because if you come in the room, I'm going to say, hey, are you Pedro? Hey, Pedro, what's up, man? Thank you so much for coming. I appreciate you so much. Hey, can you do me a favor? Can you just pass me that right here on this table so that way it doesn't screw me? Thank you so much, brother. I appreciate you so much. Hey, bro, let me be real with you. I appreciate your service. You're awesome. But I really just don't have money to give 
for a tip. I will, I will, Listen, I will apologize to the driver that comes. And I'm going to tell you this. I've had, I've had, I'm not telling you, you don't, I don't want you to think that I order coffee every day. I order a coffee once a week and I order three of them and I make that coffee last an entire week. I stretch it out. So I'm very careful. It's a $15 transaction with Duncan because I tried 7-Eleven. The guy gave me all his old coffee in the pot when I asked for a Colombian. That's not DoorDash's fault. But DoorDash wouldn't do anything about it, and neither would he. I can't go to the store and resolve it myself. So then I tried 7-Eleven. 7-Eleven, then Cumberland Farms. I got the wrong, the entire wrong order. The only, they got the coffee wrong, the wrong size, the wrong cream, wrong uh, blend. They got my <laughs> Doritos wrong. I asked for a nacho <laughs> cheese. They gave me fish. Again, these are not DoorDash problems, I get it. but DoorDash did nothing to resolve any of this. Yeah, that sucks. I listen. I'm empathetic to that. I've I've had some DoorDash orders, and they they I'm missing some things. I'm missing items. I got the wrong order. It's happened. It happens. If you do it enough, it happens. But at the end of the day, let me tell you something, brother. DoorDash is not for you. You should not be ordering DoorDash. I say that with love. And from one man to the next, I know you got some things going on. Clearly, if you're in a nursing home. DoorDash is not something that you should be ordering as a service. That's my opinion. Some people would disagree. You may disagree. DoorDash is something that should not be something that should be on your mind. Because you could get the things that you're ordering at the place that you're at. Just because it might not be the best. Why are we talk why, why are you why are you putting another driver's life at risk to get a motherfucking coffee, bro? Like, come on, think about it. And you 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 tap zero dot zero zero. Like, this service is not for you. It's just not. And you, you continue to have a bad experience, and you you still continuing to use the service. This service is not for you. It's just not. You you said right. you went away from Grubhub. Don't order DoorDash. There has to be another way for you to get coffee. And I would not want to bring coffee to somebody that can't respect my time enough to give me a dollar. I just can't do it. I can't. I can't do it. Like I'm not going to risk a car accident, a blown out tire. Uh, whatever to bring you three cups of coffee that you don't need because there's coffee at that motherfucking nursing home. That's just a, that's just that's the entitlement I'm talking about, right? I'm not entitled to a tip. You don't have to tip me. I just won't bring it to you. But my point earlier, when I think Americans mm -hmm. and part of the demise of this country is the entitlement. People ordering things that they do not need and expecting it to be perfect and typing zero dot zero zero. It makes no logical sense. And you will continue to have a bad experience if you continue to use the DoorDash app in the way that you're using it. Now, let me ask you a question. Are you saying that to be provocative or are you really that much of an asshole? No, 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 no. There's no provocative. That's how I feel. You should wow. not be okay. and, and, and you feel confident and you feel good about yourself for saying that. Telling me but, who's disabled, who can't walk, that I can't get DoorDash once a month just so that I have something from the outside world to enjoy while I imbibe the disgustingness that is in this place. It makes me so sick to my stomach every day. I can't once a month have my mother send me a DoorDash order from California. His name, I won't remain nameless, but he's a great friend and he sends me orders. I mean, these people can't send me orders because I'm laid up here and I, and I got no joy. I am by myself. I got no visitors. I got nothing going for me but mistreatment from the aides and the nurses. And I'm not complaining. And I'm not saying, woe is me. I'm up you on my situation because you don't know me, nor have you walked one foot in my shoes, let alone not walked and laid in bed for four years. So you have no idea of the process. And again, we've said it now five times, unique situation. But you don't get to decide what I do and don't deserve because I worked for 25 fucking years straight seven days a week 12 to 14 hours a day ran my own businesses i know what the fuck is good and i will work for the profit of the company but i will never take a tip 16 years in the liquor business i was told from the owner of the company you're not allowed to accept tips people because i did carry out service i knew people's orders before they said a word my customer service was top notch i never once took a tip in 16 years Again, in the in the business that I was in, selling Kirby's. You heard of Kirby vacuum cleaners? Absolutely. So I had my Kirby store for seven years, my store, all the people working under me. Hey, you know what? I don't give a fuck. If they if the customer wanted to give me, I'll let them take 20 bucks. You know what I mean? Good. And if it makes them feel good, that's gas money for them. That's a snack maybe during lunch. Whatever. That's pity. 
But to complain over a dollar, two dollars, three dollars, or even four, five dollars, that's pity. Monetary value. That's pity. That's not bullshit. The not the monetary value. It's the lack of respect you show another human being when you expect us to do something for you, when you have people there that can do it for you. You expect an outside person from the outside world to come into your world and do something for you when you have people there that can do the same thing. And that is their job. It's not my job to bring you three cups of joe for 0, 0.00. I'm sorry. It's not. That's not my job. So maybe so I misunderstand how the, how the pay grade works here. You don't get paid buffer tips. That's all you get? No. So this is this is how it works. So that order from 7-Eleven with the three coffees could be paying anywhere from two dollars right to maybe more but probably two to three dollars is what that driver is getting and they okay. might be, i don't know how far it is from you and that's irrelevant as a consumer that's not your business you're paying for a delivery fee a small basket fee i get that that coffee is costing you way more than it should but Wait, my and I earlier, have no other way to get it my point earlier was that i don't mean to be insensitive you should, you know, we, we're humans. We should, if we want something nice, a treat, whatever that is, a coffee, a cake, we should be able to have those things, right? But my point is you can have that stuff. You just choose to want something that's better, that's more, you know, it's like more luxurious. It's better. Like the No, coffee. it's about what doesn't make me sick, Pedro. If it didn't make me sick, brother, I've had hospital coffee for years when I was in the hospital. I've had coffee from the convenience store when, it, when it's 69 cents bullshit and it's garbage and it doesn't matter because I'm not picky. This shit here is not safe. Just having it near me, just smelling it in my so stomach that makes me need nausea medication. I'm not bullshitting. I'm not, a pot, I'm not a fucking coffee snob nor a food snob. I'm not fucking picky. I'll be happy with anything. This is making me physically ill. I've only been here more listen, than a month. Listen, I hate to hear that, right? But drinking coffee ain't going to make it any better. Like, you, you're talking about you don't feel well, but you're drinking coffee. Let, let's be real here for a second. Right. I drink coffee because I intermittent fast, and it keeps me from eating this food. So that way I can just survive on coffee. That, that can't be good. Like, there's no way that that's good. There's no it's, way. Hey. So the, it sounds like the bigger problem is there's an issue at the nursing home with their, their menu. Right. So I'm sure, not to make this drawn out, right? I'm, I'm sure you've probably tried to maybe mediate that, had a conversation. Maybe it's worked. Obviously, it hasn't. If you feel like you need to conversations. But there's the conversations, a big... Pedro, I know we want to be done here because we're talking in circles. I just want you to understand that by no way, shape, or form should you or any other person as an independent contractor operating under a DoorDash banner, when when DoorDash is by order and Pedro is approaching, guess what? You may not think you're a DoorDash employee, but you are a DoorDash representative. You may sure. call yourself a Dasher, but you are a poor representation of this company. And I'm dying to know if they know that this is how their their representatives are behaving and going live on a platform where they're going to tell their customers they're worthless because they can't afford a tip and because no, I'm, in a, I'm in a nursing not home. The, not all the customers, only you and, and 10% of y'all, not all. Okay. This, this is the thing. I don't no, dislike. I didn't say when I said all, I Listen, mean all me. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't dislike you, but I'm a very, I draw lines in the sand on this channel. Okay. Not everybody needs to get along. Not everybody's the same. Everybody wants to be, Treated equal. That I don't, I do not believe in that at all. I'm, I'm not very equal. Much you can walk and I can't. You're better than me. But listen, no, I didn't say I'm better than you. No, well, you saying, are. No, what I'm saying is, if you can't show me love, I'm not going to waste my time and show you appreciation by bringing you coffee. It's very simple at the core. Your issue isn't DoorDash. Your issue isn't Mister Bet on You, Pedro DoorDash Santiago. Your issue is the nursing home. And what they're yeah, feeding well, you. And, and don't, well, beyond, don't, go beyond that. don't go on your app because you're upset about your situation and expect us to do something for you for free. That's you make it two wrongs don't make a right. So your issue is with the nursing home. It's not with me and my drivers. Okay, it's not. The biggest and issue with and another issue with them is the fact that they are they wouldn't grab the food from wherever it was and bring it to me. They just leave and sit there and, and they sucks. don't care. I mean, listen, 
That's right. nice. But right. once again, about seventy-five percent of my problems are with DoorDash, but a hundred percent of my problems are with what's coming out of your mouth and his mouth. Fair. And now Look. I'm the, I'm the bad guy because I'm trying to stick up for the the customer and the customer's right. Whatever happened to the customer is always right. I mean, no matter what I say, no matter how much sense I make, you can't deny the fact that I've had logical arguments. I'm not just going off the handle, swearing at you, cussing you out, telling you you're 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 a useless piece of shit. I'm not, you're, I'm not denying that. I'm not denying that. But I'll leave you with this: You're not my customer. You're DoorDash's customer. That's the difference. That's what some of you guys don't understand. You paid DoorDash and 7-Eleven. You did not pay Pedro. And that's why you're not my customer. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. You you didn't pay me. You paid DoorDash and 7-Eleven. And that's fucked up, I know. But listen, this is what I want you to do. My email section is in the about section of my page. And because you came up here and nobody else did as a customer, I respect that. And you gave me your, your, your reason, your logic, whether we agree or disagree, whatever. I would love to send you a Keurig coffee machine. So if, if you're up for that, you can email me. It's in the about section of my page, an address that I can send you coffee that you like and a Keurig machine. I would like to give you that just for you spent making the show what it was tonight and sharing your opinion. I'll leave that up to you if you want to do that. Oh, I appreciate that. Let me, tell you something. Let, let me tell you something, Pedro, that I always wanted a Keurig machine since it first came out. And I was always waiting for it to go down to about $40. I thought if it got down to 40 I might get one, and then I think I might have seen one for forty, and then I just pushed out, and I just never got it, just because I thought I'd get it. I just, I just believed eventually listen, I'd get one for the low. You know what I mean? Listen, I'm gonna send you one because this is why. I don't want you ordering on DoorDash, so I'm gonna send you a cure. I don't want and you, I, and I won't. There you go. So look, listen, I just saved some dashers in your community from having. Fuck to yeah. From I'm gonna save your frustration. I'm gonna send you sixty dollars worth of coffee, whatever a curing machine is. And that is going to help calm down this situation. You don't have to and worry about it. And it's going to help me bring not up, bring in your gonna, to your room. And I, I just, I just solved the problem. We're good. And you solved so, another problem without even knowing it. I'm not going to have to ask these assholes for nothing because I'll go. do it my damn you self. Can, you can email me. So I don't want you hitting zero dot zero. I want you to make a promise right now. Don't ever order DoorDash and hit zero dot zero zero. Is that fair? If I send you a Keurig machine, more than fair. Did we saw, so, did we so, a huge problem tonight. Just so, just so we're clear, just so we're clear, we're I can order DoorDash, but I just am not going to put zero zero. I'm going to put something there, and it's you not going to be gotta, it's not going to be sixty two cents. You got to put, put you got to put you got to put something there. It can't be a, a penny. No, you got to put an adequate tip. For the mileage in that person's time, you can't put zero dot zero zero. You could do that. I'll send you a current machine. Fair. Yeah, because I just got a hell of a deal on DoorDash. My last order, I got a honeydew donuts for fifty percent off. So I got twenty one dollars off for ten fifty, plus the plus the service fee plus whatever. But I should have tipped, but I didn't. Well, listen, and the, and the order was good, and the order was right, and I gave my driver well, five stars. Send you a current machine. I appreciate your time tonight. Don't hit zero dot zero zero because if you do you're gonna get what you pay for <laughs> oh the chat was fire we always listen some of y'all thought he was a troll some of y'all thought uh listen the internet's a crazy place you never know i'm not gonna assume he's a troll i'm gonna assume he's a dude laid up in a nursery home i have empathy for that but that's not my business either but uh, I stand by what I, you know, 0.00, .00 if you're doing that, bro, that's some trash ass shit. You get the service you pay. You paid nothing, so you get nothing. You don't get good service. That sucks. That is how it works. I got a major headache. The show's not over. I know I got people waiting in the background. Um, let me read the chat. What do y'all think about that? I will send that dude a Keurig machine. I want, he's still watching. I want you to email me. Actually, you know what? I have a coffee machine upstairs I don't even use. I don't even need to spend any money. I'll send him that and buy him some of them cups. Right? And he don't have to, don't ever type 0, 0.00 and disrespect this community ever again. Ever. I don't want you, I don't want you in whatever city you're in. I just say some dashers, <coughs> some time and energy. So he says he got three coffees. He can make coffee for he can make a coffee every day now. Don't ever type 0, 0.00 and disrespect my people like that. Ever. Don't ever do that. Don't ever do that. 
listen, I make these videos and everybody always gives me shit. Pedro, nobody cares. No, no. Listen, let's assume this guy wasn't a troll. Let's just let's assume that. Let's just take that out of your brain. We just we just. If, if I take a man at his word, we just changed one individual's perspective because now he ain't going to order DoorDash anymore. I just saved some dashes some time. I'm going to send him the Keurig machine one person at a time, y'all. One miserable trash person at a time. That's all I'm trying to do here. Listen. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> ah. Let me see what the chat's saying. What up, Yost? I'm solving the world's problem one person at a time. But listen, his situation is different, clearly. He's in a nursing home. They're not true. But this proves my point. I, like I told him, you don't need DoorDash. None of these things are essential. Let, let me tell you this right now, y'all. Oh, my God. My brain hurts. Okay. 99% of the things people are ordering on DoorDash or any app for food delivery are never essential. Coffee is never essential. Jack in the Box is never essential. It's a, it's a nice thing to have. It's a want, not a need. So, brother, you don't need that. You don't need it. And this goes to my point. I'm holding my head out of slight frustration, but also amusement and bewilderment. Okay? Like I said earlier, he said he gets gifted some coffee or do, well, he spent some of his own money. So my point earlier, like I said, was when we take financial responsibility and we see that there's an issue and he just keeps throwing energy and money at it, whether it's through a gift or not, he could have bought himself his own Keurig probably last month, saved himself time, money, all these things, had a better experience. He wouldn't have had to come on my show tonight. Deep people need to start using their brains and thinking about stuff instead of just going on apps and expecting things to fall from the sky doesn't work like that. There's a human being on the other side of that order that has to go and do things for you. If you can't show them gratitude, that coffee is not, you're showing that driver it's not really that important to you because you hit 0 0.00. And you have bad experiences. You customers have had bad experiences. I get it. Then that means you need to do something different. We as dashers have bad experiences. We realize, okay, well, then I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to deliver there. We change habits. Some of us do. Consumers need to do the same thing. It's very simple. It's very, 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 very simple when you look at it at the, at the court root of the cause. I understand. I can talk to this dude for however long and figure out what his, uh, the problem is the nursing home. They're giving him trash. He doesn't like it. Whether it doesn't taste good because of his taste buds or whatever. It's trash food because the cooking sucks. That's the issue. Okay, you want you said you get coffees. Well, okay, well, you don't have to deliver. Nobody ever needs coffee delivered. No human being in the face of this earth has ever needed a coffee delivered. Let me say that. Somebody clip this. There hasn't been one human being in the entirety of DoorDash's existence that has ever needed a coffee delivered. Not one. It's never been one time. There's never been one time that that statement has been true. Not once. Not once. Ever. Ever. That's, it goes to my point of the entitlement of people. Nobody has ever needed that. Nobody has ever needed a cheeseburger delivered. Ever. That has never been an essential thing. There's never been some starving person that that cheeseburger saved their life. That has never happened. Never. Not one time in the history of existence of DoorDash has that ever happened. Nobody has ever needed that bottle of vodka that had no tip attached that I needed to go to, in, the, the, to the corner store to buy or to get. Nobody has ever needed that. That is a want. We have to start put, stop putting our wants before our needs. You know what that guy needs? A lot more things besides that, besides coffee. This, these are the things that I talk about here that nobody else really dissects. We're talking food delivery, but I'm telling you, these 10% these of these customers, because 90% of people are good people. There's another guy down the hall, wherever that guy is, that orders coffee too, and he probably is a nice old man or nice old woman, and he tips five bucks, and he's gracious, and he always gets his coffee, and it's always perfect. There's more people like that than this dude. Does anybody else want to come up tonight? I got a massive headache, but I, I think the people like this show. We need to keep it going. Okay. Um, 
I see some people. I'm just going to bring up a panel of folks, and I'm going to give the show to you guys for a little while, okay? This is all I ask, because I've already done a lot of cussing on here. Let's keep it. Let's, we'll, we'll tone it down a notch on the cussing and the respect, right? If we have disagreements on the panel, that's cool. If a cuss word slips out, that's fine. I've done it, but let's, let's try to bring the show back down a little bit. Let's, let's, I've already been real hot. I've been real hot under the collar. We'll take it down, still be passionate. And if there's a, I don't know, there might be a customer on here. We'll let them speak first. Um, I see Cowboy. I see No, Noe. I see Evil Delivery Driver. I see Bobby. I see Jerry Bell. And I see Funny Person 251. Uh, I see Jada. I see a lot of people. I'm going to bring y'all up. I think I can bring all of you guys up. Okay. And I'm not going to say shit. I'm not going to say nothing. I'm going to let y'all, what do y'all think? What do y'all think about what I'm talking about tonight? If you disagree with me, please bring it. I'm, I got extremely thick skin. If I've said something that's been insensitive, please feel free to challenge me in any way. I'm good with all of it. It's all good. It's all good because I've said a lot tonight. And I'm sure I've offended some people. So if you think differently, bring it. I'm, I'm fine with it. I'm going I'm to give you all the show for a couple minutes here. Hold up. Let me, um, let's see. Okay. So we have, I'm going to bring all y'all. Funny person, Jerry, Bobby. Hold up. Let me see. Let me go through the list here. Uh... Evil Delivery Driver, right. Joey, mm -hmm. Boy Courier, the Jaded Driver. Oh, he made it on the show. Look at <laughs> I made it, Bobby. I made it. I'm, uh, yo, yo, yo. I'm, I'm ready, I'm ready to be pause, cowboy pause, customer pause, this pause, evening, pause, man. Pause, pause, pause. Before we continue, the Jaded Driver's here. The Jaded Driver, the reason you didn't make it on my show last time was because you mm. were wrong. You were wrong. Shout out to Jaded Driver for finally listen, making it. Listen, I, I got to get this out. I got to get this out. Hold up, everybody. The reason you didn't make it up is because you were wrong. You were trying to talk about earnings and all this and all that. If anybody goes into their DoorDash app right now, your history of earnings is not accurate. They don't match. So the reason you didn't come up was because of that reason. I wanted to spare you the embarrassment. I need to get that out the way. Thank all you. Right? Yeah, you're welcome. Listen, it's no hard feelings, but I need. I wanted to be very clear with you on that. Okay. Now I think we got Bud Soda too. Can we fit him up here? There we go. Woo! <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Listen, you're still gonna shut up. I'm gonna let y'all don't talk over. Continue the conversation. Who wants to go first? Who wants? Can I go first? Can I go, go first? Ahead. Go ahead. No, this, no, let me go. This guy is the perfect example of what we are talking about tonight. Perfect example. He's oh, yeah. he. He first comes up. He starts crying about my orders not right. But then, one, you you have issues with the restaurant. Two, nobody will bring me my food. That's the problem with the people that. Work where you work or live. Okay. Second of all, you can't get up the bed uh, out the bed. Sorry, I ain't for the pity party. Um, it don't look like you missed a meal and mother. <laughs> excuse my language. I'm trying not to cut. Don't look like you missed a, a meal in 25 years or whatever it is you've been. You're so, and you're so come on, bro. <laughs> Pedro gonna send you a coffee maker, and you still probably won't get your fat ass out of that bed and get that coffee. I'm dead. Ass. I can tell you, dead ass, bro. He will. Call DoorDash tomorrow and do the same crap he's done the whole time. This guy, he's just looking for somebody to feel sorry for him because he's made some jacked up life decisions. But but he expects us yeah, to go get him. And his, he expects us to go get his mm -hmm. coffee and possibly end up laid up in a bed next to him for zero dollar tips. No, you could go freak yourself. And I'm sorry, bro, but he's a perfect <laughs> example of what we're talking about on this show. Somebody who thinks because he's had a sorry, sad ass life that everybody else is supposed to just bow down and be like, oh, you should feel sorry for me. Let me tell you something. Evil delivery driver was fucking homeless, broke, homeless. And he wasn't on DoorDash ordering food. He went out and he got his own damn food when he needed to. So nobody wants to hear your pity party, bro. There is plenty of drivers out here living in their car. Um, Every day living in their car, going out trying to make the best for their family, and you want to cry because nobody wants to walk up eight flights of stairs to bring you your coffee because you made a life decision to sit your fat ass in a bed because no no of your bad decision. Three no coffees, no coffees, man. An inconvenient number of coffees, man. I'm sorry, bro. I'm sorry, bro. But that's a perfect example of what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. Sorry, little girls in the house. But that's what we're talking about. That's what we're talking about. Yeah. People like this. This is the people we deliver to that just want to sit there and bitch and complain about, one, the driver has no... If, if McDonald's messes up your order, that's McDonald's. 
If, I, if yeah. you can't get your exactly. if you can't get your coffee mm -hmm. mix and blend it just right, blame Seven Eleven. Don't blame me. I don't make Seven Eleven mm -hmm. coffee. And if you got some shitty ass workers in your nursing home, why don't you fill out that complaint form and maybe you get some decent workers in there and quit expecting the DoorDash drivers to be your your servant or your caretaker. How about maybe you do that? Okay, I'm good. Was you hugging? Yeah, you yeah, okay. brother. It, it, honestly, bro, like I. I I've been listening to this stuff and I've been sitting in the background and I've just been shaking my head, man, because like I don't think I've ever in my life heard so much stupid nonsense come out of one person's mouth. Like I ain't trying to pick on a dude and I'm sympathetic mm -hmm. to his situation, but to come up here on a channel that talks about the same thing all the time, no offense, Pedro, but, and, you know, and, and to sit up here and like to act like you have no clue how this process works. And to just assume that we're employees without doing any research, that's the definition of ignorant. It's the definition of just complete mm -hmm. stupidity. And it shows a complete lack of respect for your fellow human. And to me, like, and some people might not like this, but I have no sympathy for non-tippers. I never have. I never will. Neither, it's just the way the world works. You don't have to like that. You know what I mean? Like, you don't have to like how the tipping culture in America is, but that's what it is. So like, instead of sitting here and saying, Oh, I'm just not going to tip my driver and I'm going to catch an attitude with them. And then as soon as somebody offers something nice, like giving you a coffee machine, now all of a sudden you mood changes. Now you're being all cool with them and stuff. No, bro. Oh, that that is the know. stupidest thing. The He's stupidest thing the I have ever heard. Look, and it's people that. like him that are the problem. That, I will I'm say sorry, this, go ahead. I, I give him credit for coming mm -hmm. up. I, I I mean, he came up and he, he said his piece. Nobody else, no, no other customers did. So I, I, I got for that. Yeah, yeah. He, 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 was a, yeah. he was repping a certain kind of customer that doesn't tip. The one that's like actually hard up as fuck and, you know, shouldn't be using DoorDash. And yep. in, in, in his case, in his defense, you know, he's getting gift cards for DoorDash from, yeah. you know, his his followers are um from from his mom or i i can't remember exactly what he said where he's getting these things from and so like uh, oh okay okay i was kind of hoping we'd have one of those those customers come in that's gonna be like no i'm not broke you know i actually live in a fucking mansion oh sorry my language is naturally gonna fly with this kind of a topic oh, I, no, I, I, I live i live in a mansion and i don't tip uh because i don't need to you know, tipping is optional kind of a thing. Tipping should be off. Tips are earned. You shouldn't tip before service. All the usual drag that people just spew out of their mouths about it. I was really hoping we'd get one of them. Um, and I, I, I don't know if you guys have noticed, I changed my name to Cowboy Customer. I was kind of hoping that you'd, you'd pull me up here, Pedro. <laughs> let, me, let me represent that, that kind of mindset. Because I, you know, I spend a lot of time on the, uh, the Reddit for DoorDash, the um, mm -hmm. driver side Reddit and the customer facing Reddit. And so I interact with those types a lot. And so I, I have a pretty good grasp of the kind of arguments that they make, you know, and so I was, I was totally ready to, to step into that role and just like represent that mindset and, and really go hard at it. I was sitting yeah. there like, oh, girl, let me add him. <laughs> and let me say something else real quick before somebody else goes. Another <laughs> big issue that I had with that uh that whole statement that he made, right? Was the oh, every time I order I have a problem, but yet you keep ordering over and over and over Makes and no instead exactly. of saying, "Hey, Makes let no me sense. let me order DoorDash, order some groceries because everybody knows there's groceries on the app, there's different grocery stores, right? And buy whatever things that are very easily dumb. accessible. But instead, no, I'm going to keep disrespecting the next person that does it and the next and the next and the next and the next, right? And I just don't understand that logic. It doesn't make but, any but sense to me at job. all. It's it, your it, job, it, man. Yeah, bro. And, and and when I was hearing this stuff, dude, I was I was trying so hard not to laugh because I understand his situation like is not good, right? But to sit there and be like, oh, well, because my situation sucks. I'm going to project my problems onto other people and to say, you know, like what he said mm -hmm. to Pedro, bro, I couldn't believe it. My tongue hit the floor 
when I heard him say, oh, well, you don't have sympathy for somebody in my situation, like newsflash, no. dude, in the end of the day, we're out here to make money. We're not See? out here to do charity. You know, if I want to do that, I can go work with Meals on Wheels or whatever. You know, when I'm working on a DoorDash app or whatever app I'm working on, you know, I'm out here to make money and pay for my family. What you had going on in your life, no offense, but that's not my problem. And just like my problems and nobody else's, that's just life. Life sucks. It is what it is. You just got to find the positives and the happy things to get you through it. But it is what it is, man. And, and it's it's sad. <laughs> It's sad, he can't bro. be positive. He can't be positive, bro. He's a negative person. He can't be positive. Look at him, bro. He doesn't even have. Oh man, don't even. I, I'm trying to bite my tongue, bro. So go ahead. <laughs> I, 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 hey, I understand. Can I go okay, ahead? Get the um. So basically, I agree with you, Bobby. Just um, he he put himself in that situation as a quote unquote businessman, MLM pyramid scheme. But he should know what independent contractors are, because that's basically what you're supposed to be, supposedly, under that system. So he's full of crap when it comes to that. He knows what that means. So he's the fact that he didn't do the basic research, like you said, just shows his ignorance level. But at the same time, at least he had the nuts to come up here. And there's a lot of people like that, that poor me, poor me, I'm in this bad situation, either by life choices by the sounds of it. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. No disrespect, but it sounds like you got there well, by life well, choices. Guys, we don't, or well, by no fault of your own. Hold on, first of all, that guy, that, first of all but so that, that guy ain't seen his nuts in like 15 years. Listen, bro. So don't on, even, listen uh, I don't we, hear we don't know this guy's situation, so I think we need to also understand that. We only know, we can assume things, but we don't know why he's... Yeah, 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 yeah. That's why I said it sounds like not it is. Yeah, we, we don't okay, know. Okay, okay, okay. But they fall into categories of a certain kind of DoorDash customer or a delivery service customer. He could also use a service like Dumpling where it's just straight up fees. You don't have to tip and some Dumpling driver will do it because they're getting, they're getting all the money except the credit card fee. So they would happily do that for 10 bucks to go down to Dunkin' or wherever his preferred coffee shop is and go get him and stuff. So like there's ways around it. People are maybe either not aware of it or just are ignorant of the fact. But I don't have sympathy for someone who says this, that, and the other thing. The, every time, like you said, Pedro, I've told customers, hey, just leave it standard 20% or at least four or five bucks. And all of a sudden they said, I get them back again. I'm like, hey, how's it been since the last time I seen you? Like two weeks from now. And they're like, oh, my God, I get so much better drivers now. I don't get the ratchet drivers. I don't get people stealing my food anymore. You know, I don't get it left out in the cold like that guy was complaining about. So just showing a little love toward drivers will get you a better driver like me, you, Pedro, or someone on the panel here um, who really appreciates their tipping customers. So you get what you pay I've done no tip orders, too. Okay. If he's getting that Keurig, he can get cheap K-cups from Aldi and order it. And DoorDash base pay on that ends up being pretty decent. If I'm going in and get K-Cups and a couple little other things, it probably paid me like eight bucks and I'd happily bring it right to his room. I don't care. That's easy. Yeah. Animal, what's up, bro? Yo. Hey, so Bud Soda, did you blow by a stop sign? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, he did. I watched him do it, but it's okay because I do that all the time. So yeah, the wait, yeah, wait, but, but, so wait, turn, turn, turn your camera off. You don't need to show everybody how to be a bad DoorDash driver by not following. <laughs> <him. laughs> so, yeah, turn your camera on. You're a liar. If, you, you've, if you're a delivery driver and you say you've never kind of looked the other way, like stop signs are a suggestion, Pedro. In so St. Louis. I run through stop signs all the time, dude. I, <laughs> hey, I'll tell you straight up. If, I, do, if I straight up missed one because of the snow, I apologize. I don't know which one I even you were even talking about. <laughs> I do. When I drive, I do what I want. I don't you know, I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm sure, I'm sure, I'm sure, I'm sure but there's no one here right now, and I'm sitting at a red light. Come on. <laughs> well, I'm sure. I'm sure that I'm sure the deer running around that neighborhood would appreciate you hitting the stop signs, bro, because you, you've killed enough of their families. All right. <laughs> the the city they are much smaller and faster. Yeah. <laughs> They're not fat and lazy. <laughs> She's like not that, alfalfa like... bales. I, this is my new car, by the way. I got it back after nine months. Oh my gosh. Okay. 
So okay, no cool. more deer for this guy. Who who we got? Jimmy Bell. Why don't you talk? Is that Jerry Bell? Jerry Bell. Yeah, it's his yeah. Turn to What's talk. going on, guys? Yeah, Roy, Roy, so Roy's running the show, guys. I'm gonna leave. All right. <laughs> well, first, I would love to welcome everybody to the uh, what was that? The Carlos Garcia the podcast. <laughs> or, uh, <laughs> Carlos and Garcia show. Yeah. I <laughs> uh, love you, Pedro. I had to do it, man. I'm sorry. Sorry. Oh, I'm a bad guy. I'm a bad boy. Anyway, uh, fuck, I thought we. I, I thought we were on Juan Carlos's thing. God damn, I got it wrong. <laughs> Which one? I'm sorry. Okay. I thought, no, we, were, let me get I, that I thought we were on Juan. Car- I thought we were on Juan Carlos's chat. My bad. I'm on the wrong one. <laughs> oh, geez. Well, my my favorite thing that guy kept saying, though, was um, talking about how the his nursing home is so lax and everything like that. Like, they let drivers just go in. Yeah. Uh, I've never been to a nursing home before where they don't let me pass the lobby. Like, yeah. uh, like no, you have to leave it here. I will message yeah. the customer. Don't, hey, I wanted to bring it to your mm-hmm. room, but they wouldn't let me come up. So it's at the lobby. They'll somebody they bring it to your room. They escorted me up, and only during lunch hours can you deliver food. Well, yeah, and I, can't like blame, I can't blame a dasher. I can't blame a dasher for being hesitant about going into a room. You know, it, it oh, never mind the whole no tip thing, but like there are genuine concerns about you know, like there are a lot of customers out there that you know you'll you'll see people dasher saying like, hey, this customer like wanted me to bring the food into their house, like. How do you guys feel about that? Like, should I have done it? Like, I'm feeling kind of like I was rude that I didn't. And then, like, you know, the community will be kind of divided. Be people, will say, yeah, people will say, like, oh, yeah, you know, shouldn't because, you know, there's like this one Uber driver who was had his heart cut out and eaten by a MS-13 gang member or whatever. Um, and then other people will say, well, you know, you, you no sure because some, sometimes the customer is like infirm. It's well, like, it's well, older, I, I can, I, but I can totally understand the hesitancy about going in, you know, tip aside, well, $20 tip, you know, I would, I would, I've, I've gone into customers' houses and, and help a uh, disabled customer, uh, you know, set, set the food up. Um, but of course, even myself, I was like, I was ready, you know, yeah, but, but, ready but, for you don't know what, but 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 don't don't write a paragraph of instructions if you ain't leaving no tip. You can take those instructions and wipe your booty hole with them exactly. and throw it in the corner because that's your instructions yeah, yeah. being just to me when there ain't no tip. I'm sorry. So I'm sorry. If, yeah, if it's three coffees from Seven Eleven where they don't even have drink holders that can hold but two, you know, oh, you are, no. so it's just yeah. awkward to yeah. coffees, you know, yeah. or even a place that no. has a four pack holder. You know, it's like an out of balance amount of coffee. It's just a pain in the ass amount of coffees, and then you know, it's I no always carry tip. extra drink carriers on me. But how many people would be at that store if it's a four dollar add on? He tipped two bucks. Would take it. I would not have higher standards. No I, I, a four dollar add on. A four dollar add on. How many no, guys? Not, not, I'm not doing it. It's going to be. It's going to be sent as a stack, man. It's going to be sent as a stack. A two dollar base pay stack. So that that driver is actually serving him for nothing. Not even the two dollar base pay. I, I, yeah, agree I, think that, I agree. I think, I think that's stack, a real, that's awesome. real, dis- mm-hmm. real despicable move on DoorDash's yeah. part. Well, then they think they can for that too, they think they can keep doing that. If you deliver it once, they think they can get it again. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's well, something yeah, I would have thrown out there as the as the evil customer cowboy. Um, that yeah, yeah it, it works for me. It, like people will say, oh, oh you know, the, some of these dashers are doing earn my time now, so maybe they're all, actually all getting sudden, paid well for my order. <laughs> All of a sudden, every other day in my market, it's a two dollar peak pay. So you can't tell me you can't put a two dollar extra back in on the stack. Bull crap! I never see peak pay over I, here. <laughs> very <laughs> seldom do I get it. it, it I, I would be, I would be soda. curious. Oh, sorry, I said I would be no, curious about good. how many people actually know what we get paid. Do they intentionally not tip because they know what we get paid, or they don't know? I would be curious if the customers really know. I'm just it, doesn't matter, just it, does, it, it doesn't matter right. if they know or not. It doesn't matter if they know or not, no. bro. When I walk up to your door and you say, I appreciate you, go yell that in my fucking gas tank and see how full it gets. <laughs> it ain't, it ain't yeah. I mean, you're 100%, right. 100%, Roy, 100, 100, bro. 100. <laughs> well, I always say yeah. that. You know what I'm saying? So, so it doesn't matter how much I'm getting yeah. paid. You don't know I what I'm doing. Yeah. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. 
How much well, the reality is, is it's their it's worthless this job. Words. Sorry, go ahead. It's just, yeah, it's, it's it's just the artificial sweetener of worthless words. You know, I've I've taken orders that, you know, were were no tip orders in my time. I mean, not proud of them that I've done them, but like alcohol orders, yeah. for instance, because uh, oftentimes you will get tipped because they have to like look you in the eye, you know, and mm-hmm. I've had a customer say, you oh, know, yeah, thank you. Thank you. And I've looked him in the eye and said, don't thank me. Tip me. Right. Oh, yeah, the five stars. Like, yeah, I'd, I'd rather them tip because I'm just like, you're saying all this nice stuff. They'll write in the comment section and say, I'm sure this will help you a lot. I'm like, that doesn't really make a big difference as far as my income goes. I don't know where customers think that that makes a big difference. Mm-hmm. Like, I appreciate it, but I don't know why some of them really feel like, oh, I did so much. Yeah. I gave them a big review. I'm like, that didn't change anything. I don't, I don't I get it. Why would you because I don't want you DoorDash's know. algorithm to prioritize me for you in the future. I'd rather you just didn't rate me, actually, if you're not going to tip me. If you're, because, like, yeah, yeah. if somebody doesn't tip once, they probably just don't it's tip. It's a real ever. job. As, you, you, don't, you don't, see, hey, you don't hey. see customers that, like, they tip mm-hmm. sometimes and sometimes they don't. That, that just ain't a thing. I hate that. Hey, you, see this, you you see this comment tip, right here? You see that comment tip. right there? Well, that is the great. definition of an ignorant comment. I know it's Where? somebody probably trolling, but that is ignorant as hell. When you say get a real job, a real job is something that you provide a service for and you get tangible money back. So to sit there and oh, okay. say that it's not a real job, that's absurd, bro. That's that's ridiculous. Okay. Yeah. So you're gonna call you're gonna call traditional yeah. independent contractors not real workers. So the guy building stuff is not a real worker for being an independent contractor? Bull crap, bud. Try again. Yeah, that that that's that's come Can on. I, you gotta yeah, get better than that. Get a real job because you don't have a W two A. Yeah, when I work as a handyman, am I am I not really working, or is it just it's it's just for some reason yeah. courier work, an industry that's been around since ages old. Courier work is not a real job. Let me. I'm like, gonna ask you. It is. Hold on. Go ahead. Hold on. Hold on. So. I think when a lot of us hear that, I mentioned it earlier, get a real job, right? I think the thumbnail of this lot is a woman, a Karen, that's like screaming, get a real job, right? So I think that triggers a lot of us because it's like, it's such a, it, it's an ignorant thing to say. And it's actually respectful because what is a real job? That definition of a real job is, is very fluid, right? It depends on a lot of different factors, right? But I will say this, and I want to get you guys' opinion on it. And you guys like one by one, just kind of give your thoughts on this. This kind of work that we're doing, this courier, last mile, food delivery, ride share, whatever, right? Shopping. The one thing that I think we sometimes don't think about is we're not really paying in. Most of us aren't paying into any protections, Social Security, 401k, um, nothing for our future, right? So when, when I hear people say get a real job, they're wrong, but... This kind of work, while it is a job because we're making money, how do you guys feel about, like, are we actually really, are we protecting ourselves years down the line if we're doing this too much? Because a real job, in quotations, actually does offer some of those things that I mentioned that we don't get. What do you guys think about that? Uh, Mm -hmm. I can answer that simply. It's very easy. I'll go last. Yeah, it, it's very easy, dude, because in the end of the day, you have to know how to manage your money. That's key number one, right? So just because there's not a company out there holding your hand, that doesn't mean you can't invest in a 401 or in stocks or crypto or something to set yourself up for the future. So it's just crazy to me that people would say like, oh, well, you know, I get this, I get that. I could go do the same thing just because I don't have somebody doing it for me doesn't mean I'm not obligated to have the same opportunities that they have. It might have to be a little bit different, but at the end of the day, I can still go get a 401k. Nobody's going to tell me, oh, well, you don't work for a company, so you're declined. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, it, so that's what I would say to that. It, you want to know my, resp- my response to that would be, what kind of real job do you have that you can't give a $2 tip to somebody doing you a favor? That'd be my question. What, what what kind of real job do you have? Because, yeah, it's a real job. I'm getting there. I'm getting paid. 
Ask my electric company if it's a real job. They get their payment every month. Mm-hmm. Ask my cell phone company if it's a real mm-hmm. job. Hell yeah, I get paid. My car payment gets done. So yeah, it's a real job. I but my question would back to my my question back to them would be, what kind of real job do you have to be a broke motherfucker and not give a five dollar tip? That'd be my question. Right well, back. You start a construction mm-hmm. company or anything, anything. Yeah. Else. And do you know how easy it is? Do you know how easy it is, bro? To so as a person like myself, who I can go right now and take ten seconds out of my day and sign up for a Roth IRA, and it doesn't cost me anything but a little bit of time. So me having this job, it is no problem. You know what I'm saying? Bobby, what, 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 Bobby, or anybody else? What percentage of full time gig workers doing food delivery and rideshare do you think do that? About three. I would say, to Probably. be honest with you, to be honest with you, based on the drivers that I see out here, and no offense to anybody, but most of them um, are questionable human beings at best. Uh, I, I would say it depends on the values that you grew up with. If you grew up with a person that had no responsibility and was just handed everything, chances are you're not going to know how to be responsible in life. I, on the other hand, like myself, I had to work and claw for everything I have. I was never handed anything, so I immediately had to learn responsibility growing up, just like that. You know what I'm saying? Same here, dude. And guide you the right way, you know. And I think Pedro, you bring up a good point, though. That's actually why I personally got a W two again, is because of um, thinking of my retirement and health insurance. People don't think about that. It's health insurance is expensive. Doing this as a full time gig worker, I did this full time for a couple of years, especially during COVID, because I lost my W two, and it really was beneficial. Then the income dropped over the years, and it's not stable, so I put it more as a part time. And I got a job again. And I have no shame for people that do this full time. But you brought up a good point. How many of these drivers are really thinking about their future actually saving for their retirement? Well, most. And I feel like a lot are not. And that's why I think right now I was a really large oh shit fund. (laughs) Well, but (laughs) but conversely, there's there's plenty of like nine to five wages that are not thinking about their future and are not investing into their company's four hundred one k. I would I would imagine that the rates for full-time delivery drivers with no w-2 are mm-hmm. gonna be lower but yeah. i'm open to being surprised about that because there is something about being a full-time delivery driver where it is sort of a you know i'm taking my destiny into my own hands kind of a thing mm-hmm. you know like i have oh, my, my practice time I have, now my I daughter been, and i actually have time to do that because of gig work yeah, so. i've been investing more conscientiously during my time as a delivery driver than I ever did when I was busting my ass in W two land. Mm-hmm. You know that's. And for I would sure. say this. Yeah. I you would say this. If again? you're the kind of person, if you're the kind of person that like uh, that struggles to manage your money or something, and you don't know what to do, it's very simple. While you're out delivering, and I'm not obviously, I'm going to plug this real quick, and I'm clearly not a sponsor or nothing like that. But mm-hmm. go listen to people like Dave Ramsey. And just listen to the kind of advice that they will give. And I promise you, I follow the Dave Ramsey method. So I know exactly what it's like. And if you're diligent, it works out great. So you just got to figure out and Preach. listen to things. It, it's not hard. It's not hard <laughs> to just listen to an audio yeah. podcast while you're out delivering. And boom, there's your problem. It's solved. Right there. Yep. There, there will be people who are almost in a million dollars worth of debt calling his show. And they have quote unquote real jobs. But Dave Ramsey, yeah, that's the way to go. Um, sorry, I, I just love for Dave Ramsey. I had to say that. <clears throat> I use Coach Eli. But, um, you know, another thing we didn't think about also in the future, you know, especially people that are a lot younger doing this as a full-time job, you got to think about the future of not just saving, but automation. Self-driving cars are coming. People can say what they want. How long is this job going to be around for stuff like that? That's the other reason – I went again more to the W two <laughs> route yeah, because cars, what's going to happen? Like my stepdad's a truck driver, but he's about to retire. Oh, how long is that going to be? <laughs> yeah, but man, it's look at the thing order thing of volume. About. Like, how many self driving cars right. would DoorDash need to buy to have a fleet for just your little city? 
We'll oh, look it's going to be a rock. We'll it's going to be a Disney. couple years down the road still. But I'm just saying, like, people that are thinking about this next 10, 15 years, what's going to happen? Because things are changing a lot. Not that but I why, like self-driving cars. Why would Uber but, and Lyft buy self-driving cars when they have free cars? Now? They pay well, us very little. Would, they have I, no yeah, upkeep. Yeah. Yeah. I would say this. They got kicked out of San Diego. I would yeah. say this about the self-driving cars. I'm not saying there aren't things. I've obviously watched enough videos. Right. I see the way that they're testing it on, like, you know, small and college campuses and stuff like that. But just in my opinion, um, the laws that would have to be passed, the infrastructure that would have to be built, there would be so many legal things. I, in my opinion, I don't see that coming fully in mm -hmm. my life. I'm not so saying that it won't ball. ever happen, if, if, but in my lifetime, I don't see it right fully now. happening. I just, there's no, no, no. so I, many I hoops we need, to I think we need, we need these, like, like te Tesla-branded humanoid yeah. robots to, like, you know, go up the stairs and push it, the elevator. It'll get the last mile, but it won't get those last few goddamn So wait, you know what? You know why it will never... The reason it will never right. happen is because of fuckers like that guy that was here earlier. You think that a self-driving mm -hmm. car is going to be able to walk up the stairs and drop that coffee in that guy's lap? No. He's obviously too... Does not compute. Oh, once, once again, because of his own bad decisions, probably, he can't mm -hmm. walk, and you know how the situation goes. The people don't even want... They're like, leave it at the door. What, you got to have a robot walk out of the car and drop it at the door? They're too damn lazy to even walk out to your car and get their own food. So it's never going to happen. It's never going to happen. So, yeah. well, so, okay. So in San Francisco, I think they still have the robots, right? So, what is your honest opinion? If it's a robot delivering your food, do you think you should tip? Yes or no? <laughs> <laughs> serious, uh, serious uh, thing. If you knew I that, mean, do you think no, it makes no, a difference? Don't, 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 don't tell me you're tipping DoorDash at that point. Yeah, I mean, yeah, nobody. If, if they say, well, it doesn't like, matter. Right? Said it, a hundred percent of tips go to robot maintenance <laughs> workers. <laughs> I'll tell you this. I'll tell you this. You this. In my if opinion, I, I believe if that was to happen, they would just eliminate tipping altogether. It would be removed, and it would be a straight up like a fee yeah, or whatever. Yeah, and, you know, yeah, yeah, so. they refund the tip. Yeah. And ironically, the robots go no tip, no trip. Yeah, refunding the tip would make sense. They do. You know, and, and like if that did happen, there would definitely be like a real race to the bottom between these delivery companies to get the yeah. prices lower, to lower the fees. You know, if their overhead is such that you know they don't have to worry about paying a driver. Yeah, but and they gotta pay the upkeep on the robots. That's true. The whole, that's true. The, the, the whole but, point of this. The whole point of this. What it boils down to. Don't ask people to do you a favor, and it's a favor. Anybody that says. You're not doing them a favor. It's your job. You can go eat at Shillong, okay? Because that, that's ridiculous. <laughs> I'm doing you a favor. Um, you know, it's not a service. We don't get paid. Oh, you know what I'm saying? It, that's the, what it boils down to. It, it is a favor. If it wasn't for people like us, guess who have been starving during the pandemic? Probably 85% yeah. of these people. Uh, because but, because but, they, can't but, even, they don't even know how to cook. They don't even know how to cook ramen. So, yeah, so yeah, at the end of the day, we are doing you a yeah. favor. So while you're at cell home, sitting on your couch, playing with yourself, playing with your kids, uh, watching video games, whatever you're doing, we're doing you a favor because we put our we put our lives at risk to bring you something that you, like the end of the day, Pedro said, you don't need. Nobody needs Starbucks. Mm -hmm. Nobody needs pizza. Yes, nobody know. needs McDonald's, especially when 85% of this country is fat as fuck anyway. Mm -hmm. You don't need that stuff. I'm so sorry, bro. I, I, we're doing you a favor. Blind guards. Yeah. Maybe if we piss you off, hey, for the non tippers, maybe if we piss you off enough, you'll stop using DoorDash and you'll save some money. Like Pedro said, you'll save some money. You'll do better. Maybe you'll lose some weight so you won't be sitting on your ass eating McDonald's all the time and being a cheap shit. How about that? How about, yeah, how about. How about more? Mm. How about more DoorDashers give you bad service so you stop using it? So how about that? I I, th I, could, I could recommend that. I could recommend more DoorDash <laughs> giving bad service to non tippers That's one way of getting rid of them. You doing a podcast? <laughs> yo yo. What up, Dash? Ron, you in here, bro? Can you hear me? Yep, yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me? What's up, brother? How you doing, man? I'm good. I want I want to talk about that real job, not a real job. Talk about it. Mm -hmm. First, First of all, how's it not a real job when we make real money? That, right? That's the first question. Put, yeah, put so real se time. Second, second of all, 
the company. I just got my I just got a email from DoorDash. They offer health insurance. They offer a way to get a 401k. They offer a way to put money away. They offer all the apps offer these things. But see, yeah, you tried to get zero dollars health insurance. The, okay, the, the Uber the, gets the, like the, huge the, discounts. Oh, yo, 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 I'm quick cutting me off. Please. Sorry. You had your Sorry, time bro. to talk. Let me talk. <laughs> so the customer don't know that, right? But when we get drivers out here like myself, like NGB Worldwide, like uh, Pedro, like Bobby and people on this panel to try to preach to other drivers, there's a way to become a business. There's a way to set yourself up for the future. They don't want to hear it because they don't they they look at this as just being a hustle. But the real drivers and the four timers, we get dogged out because me, I'm going to take myself as an example. When people see me post that I worked 109 hours active and then i had 135 hours on the app they want to critique everything i did but as a business person and as a businessman that understand business businessmen don't sleep warren buffett don't sleep tony don't sleep because they put the time and money to build a product that we work for yes we deliver for it. but when we when we then they'll say get a real job you couldn't cut it at a w-2 you tried to come out here and couldn't cut it out here so you had to go back to a w-2 because you used the direction we make the money out here we put the money in I, the first week of the year i'm pulling in three grand for the first week of the year people gonna say it's fake i've been making 100 grand for the last three years people gonna say it's fake because i put the time money and effort in it so how's it not a real job but i'm making six figures Quit saying it's not a real job. To you, it's not a real job. To me, it's a lifestyle. It, it gives me a better lifestyle to where I can work and take three months off without having to worry about it. I can travel the country. I can travel all over the world. So how is it not a real job? They pay me real money. When I go to my bank and they say, yo, 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 balance is this. That came from door. That came from the customers of DoorDash, not DoorDash. The DoorDash don't pay me shit. It come from the customers. But the customers don't understand what we go through out here. So either way it go, when you say it's a real job, it really pisses me off because I still rate real money. And nine times out of 10, you at your W-2, I'm making more money than you. So how is it not a real job? Ooh. That's my take Damn. on it. Shout out to Ron. That's Damn. my take on it. Put Ooh, them God. CEO hours, God. making them CEO paychecks, man. You know, he takes vacation. So even if he works a lot in one week, you know, he's taking time off so he does what he wants he oh, lives yeah. the way he wants to live listen i had i had a woman that to me is a real job listen i had a woman she made these videos um this week about me reacting to the videos i made about telling people <laughs> to broke you shouldn't do this and she got really offended by it and like oh that was, that was such a watch funny, yeah they, they like like ron is saying they tend to look down on us right almost like get a real job or da 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 but like it like like he said, I'm making more money than most of these motherfucking customers that talk shit. And I'm not somebody that's like, money's not everything to me. It's not. I require peace. I like time. Time is the most precious thing. You know, and, and, and when you have money, you actually have more time because money can be very stressful for a lot of us. I'm sure most of us have been there, right? But like, when they say, yeah, get a real job or you're, you're the pizza delivery boy, I smile like, yeah, do you know, I mean, I, I flipped the pizza delivery boy into a YouTube boy, into a vending machine boy, into this boy, and I'm making probably twice what you're making. But they they look at us like 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 we're less than because we're delivering them a pizza. It's just well, the ones that says that's a non tipper. Like yeah, like the intellect behind some of these people are like it doesn't make any sense. You know? Yeah, some people are surprised about how much money we can make. You know, right. they just they don't not, they don't realize because they they're sitting there thinking like you know how the fuck are you gonna make that kind of money because you know I tip a dollar like you making a dollar. Like, okay, you're, you're not making shit, you know, but they don't realize that there are customers out there that are gracious enough to throw 10 bucks at us, 20 bucks at us, you know? And, they don't need and, big and, tips, just decent tips is all it takes. To make good yeah, yeah. Five, yeah. Two, three, five dollars. Yeah, absolutely. If, if you can get five dollar tips and you can do do good stacks that you can just hammer out good cash flow work. Tater's always talking about cash flow, you know, and yeah. it's a, it's, it it's what matters because you're, it, you're like basically you're turning time into money you know and that's that's what this gig is you're, you're turning time into money and there's no guaranteed rate but you just kind of get the luck of the draw the orders you get sometimes they hang you up you know you, right. you never know but then like the customer is 
turning their money back into the time that they're saving. But they don't know how much time they're saving. You know, they, they don't know that if they decided to go out to get a, a burger right now, that they, you know, they'd run into a whole snafu or the restaurant would be closed or they, it's going to take them 25 minutes waiting in the lobby for their order because there's a whole classroom coming through right now. They don't know how much how much time is being saved. You know, and, yeah, and so and that's, that's the interface. You're, 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 you're changing your time for the customer's money and giving them that time back. You know, and DoorDash is just a mediator. And um, I, you guys, I'm going to have to sign off in, in just a minute here. Uh, but I, I want to close out with something, you know. People say that tipping should be optional. Tipping should be optional. Well, you know what? I say manners are optional. And tipping is manners. And I like the, the term I like gratuity. That. I like but the term gratuity because it really tells it what it is. You know, you're, be, you're being gracious enough to give us the money. We're giving being gracious <laughs> enough to give you the service. And so if a customer ever shows me by their actions that manners are optional, <sighs> now listen, manners are optional. Manners yes, sir. Are, yeah. Yeah, that button is optional too, though. I, 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 I really like that. Hey, yeah, Bobby, 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 you're, yes, you're sir. your favorite guys here. UDM delivers. Man. Oh, shit. Hey, hey, hold on real oh, quick. Yeah. Before, before I get to my point, I just want to say shout out to the GOAT UDM. Thanks, bro. How you doing, man? I hope you're having a good night. Broccoli. Did you like that? Broccoli. UDM, I made Shout it. out to the GOAT. Anyway, uh, so so let me, let me say this, right? And this is not necessarily what we were talking about. This is more in defense of my boy Ron, right? Because I, I, I see the I see this the noise that people say, look, man, I I have personal proof that this guy makes money. I know he makes money. He's a hustler. And any of you people out there that call cap or say he's not doing it or whatever, like honestly, like he ain't gonna say this or he might not say it, but I'll say it straight up. You're the miserable person because you don't know how to hustle. And don't hate on another man and be jealous of his pockets because you don't know how to hustle. Get out of here with that. That's that's lame ass shit. And, and honestly, like it, you need to take a deep look inside yourself and realize that maybe you're just not as good as you think you are because you're gonna hate on another man who's out here just doing his damn thing. Yeah, that's all I want to say. You can't hate. You can't hate on a man I, or a woman taking care of family, right? I mean, come on. You I, can't I, I, exactly. Crazy. I thank I thank you for that, Bobby. But see, the thing about it is, I'm not the only one making six figures at this. I can run down a list of names, and they all gonna say we capping. I'm not the only one. I'm not the I'm not the one. I've been doing this three years. It's people that's been out here longer than me making over a six figure, and I can put them out there. But hey, I don't know if they want me to blow up their spot. But the one thing I am, I'm the first one to blow up the spot in the gig economy so now that everybody know i blew up the spot they want to say it's cap because i do what you won't do i put the time it's look y'all up it's two thirty two o'clock in the morning it's 7 30 here for me in hawaii when y'all up when y'all sleep i'm making money when y'all up i'm making money i don't stop my grind until i feel like it's vacation time for me just because you don't know how to grind and hustle don't mean I don't know how to grind and hustle. Just because you make a hundred dollars and spend two hundred, don't mean I make a hundred dollars and spend two hundred. I don't keep up with the Joneses. I can afford to, but I don't keep up with the Joneses. I don't complain about an eight dollar gallon of milk, but I'm spending fifteen dollars on a Starbucks coffee every day. I don't do none of that. You guys don't know how to hustle. You guys don't know how to work. And I'm talking to some of these drivers because y'all need to take accountability. Y'all make it look bad for the good ones. The good ones, y'all make it look bad for us. Because when we go in these places and you're coming out with your bonnet on, you're coming out in your Crocs, you're coming out smelling like your, your three days trash last week, you make it bad for us. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I, don't, I, don't speak, I, don't, I don't speak on a lot of stuff, but I'm tired of these lazy ass drivers that couldn't cut it at a W-2, tried to come out here, couldn't cut it, then go back to a W-2 and look down upon us. We making more money than y'all. Some of them ain't going to say it. Some of them ain't going to say it, but I'm the first to tell you. I'm the first one to blow up the spot, and I'm in Google for the rest of my life. If you don't believe I'm making 100000 a year, I don't care because you don't know what's in my bank. 
I got five other businesses because I started in the gig economy. I don't talk about that. I talk about gig work. See, the gig economy is just not a hustle. It's a business. And when I'm going to quote the one that said it. When Jay-Z said it, I'm not a businessman. I'm a businessman. Business. You can't tell me what I'm worth. You can't tell me what I'm worth because I know I work one app. I don't even multi app DoorDash for the last three years going on four years. I don't work nothing but DoorDash. And every year, the first week of the year, and don't believe, don't believe, don't believe, just watch it because the community post is coming for my earnings this week. You're going to say it's cap. You're going to say it's a screenshot. You're going to say whatever you want to say. But that's real time. Huh? That's real time. It's going to be, if it ain't three grand, it's going to be 2,900 for the first week of January when y'all say it's dead out here. Y'all too scared to go 15 minutes to a zone that's making you money when you're sitting in a zone that's dead. It ain't the market. It's the zone. Learn your Preach, zones. Dog. Preach. Not just the That's market. Right. Learn your zones. Learn your zones. If you learn how to communicate with some of these customers, you just might get a tip. You know what I'm saying? Stop all mm -hmm. the cap. I'm not. Stop the capping. Because half these drivers ain't mm -hmm. telling the truth. Half of y'all ain't telling the truth. Just because you don't get that $20 tip on every order, that customer probably left you $2. That customer probably left you $3. At the end of the week, my DoorDash money is less than my tips. This week, my tip's going to be probably two grand. My DoorDash money going to be a thousand. So, so think on that. I will be a damn fool. It's four million drivers alone in the, UI, in the USA in the gig work to sit up here and say I make a hundred thousand and all y'all find out I'm lying. That'll be a damn fool. Think on that. Stop smoking the weed. Stop smoking the meth. Stop smoking whatever you smoking and learn how to do business. And then you'll understand DoorDash is my supplier. I go deliver the dope. That's what it is. They my supplier. They give me my product. I go deliver it. It's just like Blue Magic, baby. I make it look easy. It ain't easy, but I make it look easy. And like I said, you don't got to believe me. You don't got to believe me. I've been on a lot of channels. Just watch me. Just watch me do it. Yes, I ride around in my truck with my camera facing the road. Learn something. Learn something. Stop hating on people that's putting in work. Just putting in work. This Great. is a grind out here. This is a grind out here. Yeah. You don't need to, you don't need no set $29.93 an hour. I don't it's been hours I done made 200 in an hour. But you want to make $29 an hour. That's bull. Great. If y'all yeah, don't if y'all don't you believe hustle, Ron, sorry, bro. If you hustle, you will make the money. And that's what it is. I'm not saying it's the brat because it ain't never been about the money. It ain't never been about the money to me because it, 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 I've made I've made hundreds of thousands before the gig economy. I've I have businesses. I have business. It's always been the lesson of you can make money in a gig economy, and I'm gonna show you how to do it. That's all it is. And if you're not willing to do it, go get a W two. Take less. Take take orders. Work that eight hours. Go home and be broke. But if you really want some money, study the gig economy because it ain't going nowhere. It ain't going nowhere. And you can do it full time. Real businessmen, real billionaires, they don't sleep. I changed hey, you know my what? life. I've changed my eating habits to make sure this job or this delivery life is for me. A lot of y'all don't. A lot of y'all don't. Bobby has changed his living, his eating habits. People in this economy don't just look at it as a hustle. They look at it as a grind. And if you're not willing to grind and put the time in, get the fuck out. That's just the way it go. Make Stop oversaturating markets when you only want to make $50. And then you're spending $150 just to keep up with the Joneses. And you can't even afford to keep up with the Joneses. Yeah. And you know what? If y'all don't believe what he's saying, go look him up. He's had inter real interviews from real news articles that have posted oh, about him. Good. He's been yep. on multiple interviews. So, like, it, this is a real story. So, if you think it's Cap, go look it up. It's right there for your own eyes. Right, My bad, Pedro. Up. I I ain't, I ain't trying to take over your show, but I just the the, the part of it is the fact that the matter of it all is we had somebody that used to be in the gig con on your panel saying it it it, uh, it ain't a real job. That's bullshit. If if it's got it's if I'm making real if if I'm making real money, how is not a real job? 
make that make sense to me. Because when I go, if I was at the W2 and I was in a bathroom sitting on the toilet scrolling Instagram, Twitter, X, whatever it is, I'm still hiding from work, not learning shit, not knowing the job. But if I could tell you I made 60000 to to 100000 at the W2, you ain't going to question it. But the minute I tell you I make, I make 60000 to to 100000 on DoorDash, oh, you cap. Fuck out of here. That's bullshit. It's bullshit. Because the W-2 worker ain't no different from the, the delivery worker. When you get up at the W-2, you're working 45 minutes from your job. So now you got to get up at least an hour and a half before you even get there and punch the clock. So you're going to be outside of your home. The average W-2 worker is away from their home from eight from 16 to 18 hours a day. 16 to 18 hours a day. And if you got small children, you push pushing 18 to 20 hours a day. So just think about that. So what does it matter if I work at 16 hours, 18 hours, 20 hours a day and I'm still making the money? Because at the end of the week, my bank say, look, you deposited three grand. You deposited twenty eight hundred. You deposited at the end of the year, six figures. What's up? But it's What's cap. Up, Who that? What's up, boobs? Who that? What up, what goat? What up, goat? I'm, I'm island dude, man. I'm island dude. What's up, Pedro? What's up, everybody? What's up, man? What's hey, going on, going, man? Hey, I, I'm, I'm just saying, I'm just saying it like this, and, and I, I can go down a list of names, like I said, that I done studied, that I don't. I when I came into economy, that's what I was looking for, because I knew people say it was gonna be cap. The first person they told me to go check out is Mr. Flex. Mr. Flex been putting in putting in time, work, and energy into this. Everybody say he cap. Dog mm. Chapman been putting in time, work, and money into this. Everybody probably say he cap. You got uh Sybaris out there in Florida putting in time, work, and money into this. Everybody say he cap. Look at Pedro. Everybody say he cap. He fake, he phony. They say Bentley cap, fake and phony. I can keep going down a list of names. Maybe they didn't want to blow up the spot, but I'm the first one to blow up the spot. And that's what the problem is with everybody. It's not hard to make six figures and nothing you do. The only thing that's really hard about it is maintaining it. That's it. But if can I, I can go can I say something way, real quick. Go, go ahead. Well, I, I gotta ask you first. What island are you on? I'm on a, uh, the island of Oahu. About the, I'm in my 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 market is Honolulu, Waikiki, Chinatown, Hawaii Kai, the island of Oahu in Honolulu, 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 Hawaii. All right, so all right, so about how many square miles is that island? Yeah, uh, square miles. It probably take me two and a half hours to travel the whole island. So square miles, I can't use that hours? right now. Two and a half hours. Two and a half hours. All right. So this is what I wanted to do, right? As a as a person that grew up on the island, I wanted to support what you're saying because. <clears throat> so let me. Let me give those that are not from an island a little bit of a perspective on what tourism can do for the island, right? Um, obviously, Hawaii is a, a chain of islands. A lot of people want to go to Hawaii. It costs a lot of money to go to Hawaii. People go on honeymoons to Hawaii. Everything is, I mean, Hawaii, it, might, it may or may not be expensive to live there, but it's like there's a lot of money that's always going to Hawaii, you know? And the thing about it, too, is I try I, I had to explain this to somebody else. Um, the island life, everything is not as far as it is in the U.S. Right. So let me give let me give you all an example. Boots, I've I've watched you do your ride alongs even when you was on a stream with me, bro. And I'll see you. You're parked at a restaurant and then you will go pick up the order. And then, like two minutes later, you're already at the drop off. I'm like, "What the hell? You ain't going nowhere." <laughs> it's like things are a lot close, closer. I'm not saying that you don't have to ever drive far, but a lot of things on the island, in the on many islands, are nearby. Not all of them. It just depends on how far the customer chooses to be. But I believe that boots you are making the money that you're making because the volume is there. It's, it's an island for tourism. And on top of that, 
it's an island. It's not South Florida. You know, it's like, it's an island, man. And it's like a lot of things are nearby. And please correct me if I'm wrong. I've never been to Hawaii, Honolulu. I've never been there. But I grew up on an island. And I know where all the congestion is, is in town. And town is where every restaurant is, all the party clubs, everything. That's, it's like it's in one area. I'm not, I don't know. Correct me if I'm wrong, Boost, but. I see that you know how to work your island, the place that you live, the place that you work, and you work the times that you know that the restaurants and everything are open. So for all those that are doubting you, I don't even understand it. Maybe they just don't understand how nearby things are for you to knock out as many orders as possible per hour. Hey, hey, UDM, let me say something real quick before Ron does it, right? <clears throat> so um, I am in communication with Ron almost on a daily basis, and I have seen in real time numerous multiple times per day the kind of orders he gets. So I actually can verify 100% that what he's saying is happening. I literally watch it every single day on a daily basis. I see this shit, dude. There's, there's no cap. Okay. Okay, so I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, you right about the island, but I'm gonna give you this caveat. Okay. Be uh, by the end of next month, I have thirty thousand lifetime delivery, and in, in on DoorDash alone, right? Just DoorDash because that's all I do. But the, all those deliveries hear, didn't. I, come I missed, off. Can you guys hear me? I don't hear that. <laughs> I hear you. Because all, all those deliveries didn't come from Hawaii. I got six states. That I delivered it. And I'm going to give you an example. When I went to Denver last year. I told myself I was going to make $200. In eight hours in Denver. In Colorado. A market I never been in. Didn't know what was going on. I made $200. And the reason I'm telling you that. Is because any place I go. Me. Me. Any market I go into. Any zone I go into, I'm going to figure it out because I'm going to set a goal for myself. Whatever I say I'm going to make in that zone, if it takes me 20 hours to make it, I'm going to make it. And that's the difference, in my opinion, that set me apart from a lot of people. Yes, I'm on the island. Yes, it's a tourist spot. But on the mainland, there are places. I have family back in Michigan right now still pulling in two grand a week. It's no cap here because the thing about it is we make what we want to make out here. If you set yourself to standards, if you set yourself to goals, if you set yourself on better living, you're going to make the money. I can take a market of zones, me, I don't care how dead it is. I'm going to figure it out and turn it into a profit for me. A lot of people are not going to do that. We have hey, a boots, person boots, who sits. Boots. Let me, let me ask you a question. Do you think that says more about your work ethic or, your, or, or the market? Because I, I think some people just don't have the, the 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 ethic, the work ethic, or time to put in the time that you do, or you know what I'm saying? Well, well, okay. Everybody's situation is different. Everybody's yeah. not like mine. Everybody's everybody's is different, right? Okay, yeah. so you might not can't put the hours I could put in, but if you could put in four hours a day, right? Just just saying, you put in four hours a day. Your average person not going to put that whole four hours in because they can't stay off their phone. Even though we use them for work, they got two phones. On that other phone, they scroll to Facebook, they scroll to Instagram, they all up in everybody else's bid. So they distracted. The attention span of most drivers is, is short and minimal. Yeah. They don't know how to focus and get to their goal. They got to know everybody bid and they got to run around and gossip and try to get hot facts when they when they got hot garbage. When I'm telling you, if you, if you take the time and dedication out here, and put the time and dedication you do. You don't go into the W-2 and tell them what you want to make. You don't. You go, you go into the W-2. They give you a set amount. You believe you worth that amount. And you do that. That's what it is. So a lot of drivers are accustomed to taking orders. Yes, we got direction when we, when we hit accept and when we hit complete. But other than that, we got a lot of free time. I minimize my distractions. If I don't want to talk, I'm not answering the phone. If I'm grinding out here, I'm grinding. I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell, tell you just like this. The first 18 weeks of this year, I'm, I'm going to be 
if not at 60, damn near 70 grand. So the first 18 weeks of this year. Can I ask you a question? Not, go, go, go ahead. Go ahead. You, you don't have the tier system in your market. So are you saying the money you make in Honolulu, you can make that here in South Florida? With the tier system? Yes. Yes, I could. Because I'm going to figure it out. I'm not going to cry and complain. You got more people crying and complaining, whining and, and whining, and saying what they can't do, what the app doing with this, this and that. So uh, the reason why the apps are changing is because the drivers don't want to take accountability. And it don't matter what app you work. They don't want to take accountability. Accountability. <laughs> accountability. OK, I'm going to give you an example. Somebody was saying the people who were cherry picking are suffering because the tier system. And the people who did the app and followed the the um, AR are, are are getting rewarded, but the company was put into a bad decision. You cherry picking, you multi apping, the orders being late, this, that, and the third. They had to make a decision. Drivers don't understand the res responsibility falls on us too. We got to take a look in the mirror and be accountable for the things we do. When you got, I'm, I'm in, I picked up an order at Jolly B. I'm the second driver. The first driver took the food. Now you got this merchant don't want to give me the order because they took the food. You got people out here doing so much shady, making the good drivers look bad. I'm telling you like this for me. I don't care who believe it or not for me. Whenever I say I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it because nobody can tell me I can't. And if you can't have that mentality in the gig economy, you need to leave it. I go anywhere I'm going, I'm going to make it work for me. I can make the money in South Florida. I can make the money in Chicago. I can make the money in Michigan. And I'm saying it for me. For me. And I believe, I believe in my heart of hearts, anybody that want to make money in a gig economy can do it. And I, even though I'm no longer with them, even though I'm no longer on the team, gig war show everybody that. In four months, 12 people made over $250,000 across the world, across the globe, different states, different counties, different markets. Yes, I was leading the pack, but still what I'm saying is it's an example. Four months, 12 people made over $250,000 and everybody didn't want to look at it because they thought it was a big calculator and the person in charge of it, they don't really care for it. So that's what I'm saying. It's never about the money. It's always about me showing people in this economy that you can make the money. It's out there. It's out there. I had a guy who was taking every last order. I said, don't do that. Don't take every last order. He changed his process. He could never get over 398. 398. He go by the name of Leading Edge. Last year, he put up 127,000. Because he changed his ways and said, look, I'm going to do it your way. Now he making four to five hundred a day just by doing something real simple. Last last week on the live, no Matt, no giggity. He's about to go home. I say, keep going, bro. He pulled in three hundred. I'm telling you, it, it doesn't take a lot to do this in this economy. And like the guy said, I mean, the guy that the guy who was on here was an asshole. But like he said. He said it just he said a, a key point. If you just if you just take a little bit of effort, you will get a tip. Don't worry about the last person that didn't tip you because you missing out on the next. That's going to give you that hundred dollars you looking for. And if you don't believe me, ask Bobby. Bobby done been down. here. I've been like, Bobby, it's slow. Bam. Here you go. Game changer. I deliver one, two, 14 inch pizzas and one, two liter pop. I got a hundred dollars for that. A hundred dollar tip. All because I was in communication with the customer. It's not about, I'm not, I'm not saying this to be cocky or arrogant. I'm saying it because I'm confident. I can do anything I want to do because I know who I am. I know what I'm worth. You cannot, can't nobody on this earth tell me, or oh, okay, there's only one person that can tell me that. And that's the man I look at in the mirror every morning. That's the only person that'll tell me I can't do something. But when I look back at that man in the mirror, I'm going to tell that man, I can't fail you. So let's go get it. And a lot of people don't do that. They want to throw rocks, 
hide their hands, complain about the app, do this, do that. Pedro, Pedro's doing this. UDM's doing that. Or uh, uh, Cherry's doing this. But they but looking for they looking for they look they doing all the other stuff instead of UDM. You've been showing people how to get money for a long time and they ignore you. Pedro, you've been showing people how to get money for a long time. They ignore you. I ain't even really showing people how to get money, but they ain't watching how to get money because they don't know how to get money. They think it's all a hustle. This is a grind. The gig apps, you can make whatever you want to make. If you if you making a hundred dollars, don't spend two hundred dollars. Yeah. Hey, real quick, I gotta jump off. Pedro, give a thumbs up. Bobby, look, I made it. Pedro, come on, thumbbs up. I gotta get up. Oh, oh, you're good. Yeah. Yeah, good. yeah. I've been listen, and, listen, Pedro. And, and, I've been giving I've been giving Jaded Driver a lot of shit for a long time about not getting up here. So. <laughs> I'm up here, boys, right in the middle. Well, and, <laughs> I, and, I, and I explained to you why you didn't the first time, but when I saw you coming up, when I saw you back there, I was like, I gotta bring him up because what you know, it's, it's all exactly. love, man. It's all love. Exactly. You all have a great night. You Peace. too. Take care, man. Night, man. And, and you DM to answer your question. Anywhere I go, I make it work for me. That's all yeah, I can I, say. I, I, that's not really my question, though. I, my question, my question is, can you make what you make in Honolulu, in South Florida? I'm, yes. I, I mean, a lot of what you're saying, I hear the passion, I hear everything you're saying, and yet people do be complaining. But at the same time, I, I'm speaking from my experience, working long days long hours uh taking taking orders might not take every order but i know what i can make in south florida i know how to make uh, shoot if i really put my mind to it if i work all day i could probably make a thousand dollars a day here okay but that's not just gonna be on doordash you know what i'm saying but you it's like mm -hmm. i'm listening to you i hear the passion i hear everything and i'm like that's we got one too many drivers here we got too many scammers here we got too many of everything here in south florida for you to think that you could come here with your account and you're gonna go out there and you're gonna work 20 hours and you're gonna make six seven twenty nine hundred a week because of you knowing your work ethic in Honolulu and Michigan and is going to work the same here. I'm here. And again, I hear the passion. I hear everything that you're saying. And I do back you up 100 when I say, well, when you say that a lot of people do be complaining, but it's not that simple everywhere. I can't say that I can make six hundred dollars in every market but i can make two hundred dollars in every market on not just on one app i could make two hundred dollars in one app uh, i mean two hundred dollars in in any market i'm not gonna just be doing doordash though i mean i commend you for just doing mm -hmm. doordash but i'm not I, just I, gonna I, do DoorDash. I, I, can i be the in between I, here Go ahead, I'm, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, Buster. Let me, let me, let me, let me play this out. In my heart of hearts, UDM, I do believe you can make it on one app. The reason why I say that is because I don't worry about market saturation. I don't worry about the next man because my work, that's when my work ethic come into play. I go, yeah. I go. So I'm going to ask you, how many zones are in Florida? How many zones are in Florida? South Florida. I tell you, I've worked 13 zones. So, okay. And, and I'm not for sure, but this is what I'm hearing. So this is what I'm hearing about South Florida or in Florida, right? Dog Chapman's making over a hundred thousand a year. So if dog Chapman can make over a hundred thousand a year. And I'm not for sure. And, and dog, if you are listening and I'm overstepping, I apologize, but I've been hearing this from other people, right? That you've been making over a hundred thousand a year in Florida. So if Dog Chapman can make it in Florida, why can't I? You're talking you see what I'm about saying? hold up, because Dog Chapman, we share the same South Florida market. Dog Chapman is a multi apper You're talking about DoorDash. It, uh, but I'm just uh, okay. It doesn't. 
it it doesn't it do, matter. It do matter. It do oh, matter. Okay. You said you saying the same amount of money. You didn't say the app. You said the same amount of money, right? So Dog Chap is making over a hundred thousand multi apping. I know I can come there. I'm confident in myself to say I can come to South Florida on DoorDash alone and make over a hundred thousand because I know me and I know my work ethic and I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to find a zone me, that's going to pay me. Hold up, real quick. Let me let me nah. say this, and then I want I got a uh, Trill Troy's in here. He came up. I want to see what he's got in Buzz Soda. But I think it seems like Boots is talking about putting in the hustle. UDM's kind of saying, well, obviously not all markets are the same, right? And like plus with just DoorDash, UDM saying, and correct me if I'm wrong, UDM can't make a hundred k maybe with just DoorDash. Is that accurate? You you think UDM? That's not my good. I can I can make. I can make over a hundred K with yeah. multiple streams. Multiple. Not exactly. just exactly. But, but if you can only exactly. use DoorDash, it would be it would be really hard if it was on one. It would be yep. very difficult because we are time we have a lot of drivers, a lot of scamming going on here, a lot of yeah. wasted time here. That's yeah. why I'm it, saying it, it like okay, I'm in an but area of about I just wanna hold go on, ahead. I wanna add this one one thing to think about. And we all know this is you know if you get if you take your phone out right now. Right. If you if 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 you do 20, let's just go reasonable, 20, 20, uh, 14 hours a day, which is a lot. Well, Boots is putting in that kind of hours. I think this is how he's making it. 14 times 20, 280 a day, 280 times 365 is one hundred and two thousand dollars a year. Right. So Boots is the way I look at it. Boots is doing it by just being out there for a long amount of time. And that's how that's his hustle. He grinds. Stupid. He ain't gonna, man. Stupid. He ain't gonna let anybody get in his way, right? So, you know, I think I don't a hundred K could be done in a lot of different places. It's gotta be a good market though, still. But it's gonna take 365, 14 hours a day. You know what I'm saying? Like, and that to me, I couldn't do that. I would never want to do that. Hey that's Pedro, true. can I can I speak my piece, man? Go ahead, Trey. Go ahead, um, Trey. I feel like yeah. I feel like <laughs> Okay, a hundred k a year, right? He keep repeating that, right? Which I never made a hundred k a year, but I came close. Could I have made a hundred k a year? Yeah, <laughs> anybody can make a hundred k a year. If you out there twenty four hours, twenty three hours, twenty hours, nigga, that is. I'm sorry, I'm sorry for cussing, but that is crazy. Anybody can make that, but that you're telling somebody to stay out there all day to make a hundred k a year. That is insane. So let me put it like this. If you was a trucker, right? If you was a trucker taking $1 per mile trips out of California to New York and you own that truck, by the end, by the end of that month, you will be out of business. All, good, all money ain't good money. Just because you out there all day and you making $280, $300 a day and you, you working all day. And you made hundred k. That's not good money. All money ain't good money. At the end of the day, we for should you, be working for, towards for the goal you. to work less and make more. Telling, well, telling, well, telling, how you know, somebody, how, 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 how you, how you know I'm not. And first of all, you're not. I never tell any. I never. How, how you know I'm not? You don't know. You don't know me. What time that's, is that's it right now? Seven, what time is it right now? Seven, over there? It, it's seven. It's seven fifty nine. And when did you go to work? I started at five to six o'clock this morning. Okay, and what? Okay, you at thirteen if right hours, now? Bro. Right now? Right, right, <laughs> right, right now? If, right, okay, I'm at thirteen hours right now, and I'm sitting at four hundred and fifty dollars. I can go home if I want to. I could have been went home. Okay, right? but at I could have been went home. Miles, how but, many miles but, have you drawn? How many? How many miles have you drawn? It. The, what does the mile? I write them off at the end of the year. So what does the miles matter? The miles matter. I write okay, them off. So if you was a trucker, well, I write them off. I if get you was it, a I get trucker, it back. And you're I get driving it back. way so more what does miles it... than what you're making. You're going to be broke. Okay, I'm broke. Well, it is what it is, bro. I'm not. I don't. I'm not here to convince you. I'm not here but, to convince nobody. But trail, trail, I'm not. I, first of, first of all, first of he's all, preaching, first of all, he's preaching a dad in game. Everybody can't do that. But trail, and what you're doing also isn't okay. okay. You talking about why rich people? Okay? Why, why? Rich why, people make why isn't what you're it, making. Uh, why, why isn't his, his it okay? Why isn't it right. okay? He why isn't it okay? Because you said it ain't okay? Because you said it ain't okay? Why isn't it okay? 
Because true. society said it. Okay. Know, listen, I know you're lonely as hell. True. You got kids, I know you don't. <laughs> oh, okay, true. you're right. You're right. That's cool. I know you, you don't. You There's know, no you work know. life balance there, bro. That is how is it no work? Well, I'm going I'm to ask you one question. If you talk to a millionaire right now, if you talk to a millionaire right now, they and then they they lost. They tell you they lost their family. They lost it all. They'll tell you they'll take it all back right now. I'm gonna tell you just like this. Because all don't know, money ain't good right? money. All time. My spent work life. Like, my spent. work. Okay. Okay. My work life balance is fine. My family is fine. My girlfriend is fine. You like I say, you don't know me. You know what I'm saying? You you just going off with what society say. You trying to discourage somebody that you're not gonna discourage because you can't do it. If you can't do it, just say Ain't that. Nobody if you want, if you want, anything. if you want, if you if you won't I'm do it, just say that. You. Yo, you, you you're preaching, not telling me nothing. Preach that I'm not preaching. Yourself. I'm not preaching. Because that is no, toxic. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not gonna stop doing it, bro. Just because you say it, you're you don't you 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 don't you mean nothing in my life. In whoa, whoa, right whoa. Now. You cannot make a hundred k in Atlanta right now. You cannot make a hundred k. In okay. The only, the only, the only way, the only, the only, the only way, the only way we'll find out if I do it, right? Because you say I can't do it, right? You say I can't do it, right? I'm, I, I'll be the first, and everybody on this panel and people that's listening, tell, I tell you, I'll be the first one to tell anybody, don't work like I do, don't do it. But if you did half of what I did, you will be good. So don't bro, sit up I here and say like I tell people. Exactly. I worked like you in 2021, bro. Okay, in 2021. Listen, that's you. Listen, the that's money you. is the same what it used to be. You working way more for less. No, I'm not. See, just because yes, you, you hear are, the 16 bro. right now, what did you what did you just I just told you I'm sitting at 450 dollars I could have been went home. I could have been went home, right? But I'm and still why? out making money. Because I'm still out making money. Because I, I want to. Cash flowing too. I want. I want to. I want to. You're toxic for trying to tell me how to live my life because society told you how to live yours, bro. I don't live the way society tell me to live. It doesn't bother me. You don't know me. I'm not. I'm a you don't know me either. I you don't know me either. But I don't so if you a hustle, in a way if, where it's like, oh, I'm gonna be out here 20 hours and then I only get three hours of sleep, then I'm gonna come like, no, bro. What's up, dude? Well, who said I? Yeah, who yeah, said yeah, I work 20 hours a yeah. day? Time Who out. said I work 20 hours a day? Time you out. you saying that? Hey. Time out. Just got me. Come on, man. Bud Soda, go ahead. Okay, I have been someone who works 20 hours a day. If you have a problem with that, sorry. Too bad. I'm independent. I do as I choose, just like Boots does. So is it possible to make 100 k in many markets? Yes, but you have to hustle your butt off. Now, do some people choose to take priorities with other things, like if they got kids in their life, like a Mr. UDM has two young boys. Yes. So we all result. make different decisions in life. So knocking someone when they're a single man who goes out and decides to hustle, I think is wrong. But it's also wrong to say, well, at the same time, well, you should do this. You should do that. Even though we have different priorities in life. So like there's no reason to demean somebody over it. Like a lot of people knock me hard, but at the same time, this went way left because I was out of the car 30 seconds and it started getting aggressive. So we're fine. We need, we just, we need, we're having a good we need to reprioritize what we're doing and everyone has to reach your eyes. Now, could I go with just DoorDash alone and make the kind of money I make? Heck no. It takes seven freaking apps to even try. And I'm not making as good money as I used to. So that's what I wanted to say. It's like I used to be Mr. $600 if I went out and grinded for 18 to 20 hours if I wanted to. But I can't do that. I had one day where it was really good again. It was 21 hour day. And I was on a live stream. 570 bucks. Like 571 and change to be exact. But like. See, but but Soda, listen. That's where I'll come in and say. Me personally, I don't think any of us should work 21 hours a day driving. That's yeah, Pedro, by Pedro, choice. Pedro, but no, that, I that don't recommend doing day, it daily. Day, you make that in 21 hours, right? If you break that up into two days, that's only 200 something dollars. So did you really make, see what I'm saying? Did you really make that? I money? see his point. So what's the, what's the really difference do. if you went out and worked 10 but, hours and made $200, point, $235 but, versus so, a guy who worked 
did it in 21. But so the, this is the difference. So I'm not knocking anybody's hustle. I listen, this is what's great about the gig economy. I think UDM could attest yeah, to it. You know, we, we get to do how we want, take care of our families, that, that, that personal, flexible life balance. But 21 hours, if, you, if that's straight, that's not safe. That's why truckers but, aren't able to drive more than 10 or 12 hours. That's a good point. Safety you issue. Know? So it's a yeah. safety issue. I'm not talking. You Big time I, was on getting, that. I was getting but there. Pedro. That's definitely I a was safety issue. There. If you're doing 21 hours straight, I, I would never I would never recommend any human being. Okay. So what about people who do three W-2s and work 18 hours? That's different. Well, they're not driving. And, they're not driving. Well, right? So they might not be driving. Even if they're not just driving constantly, that's very fatiguing. you got to count the downtime in between between each job. And they're it's probably different. out of the house for 21 but, hours. But so it's different. We're, that's why there's regulations on truck drivers. Dr truck drivers can't do that because they'll kill somebody, right? So yeah, we're not driving a truck, but we are driving a car. So there, there is a safety issue there. That's that's my take on it. You guys can talk after that, you know. But, but look, I, I, there, there's, but there's look, some look, truckers who do different look, things look. while they're not driving. They have to run like a water truck at certain sites. And they don't count that as drive time, and they're technically working 18-hour days, yeah, even though they shouldn't be. Look, they're told to get right back in the truck. Minnesota. I think many people on it. Many people are well. I don't. I'm not gonna say many people, but some people are not understanding what I think Trill is explaining, what Dash of Life is explaining, even what Pedro yeah. just said. Like, yeah. right, like, look. One thing as content creators, and I'm pretty. I'm pretty sure. Uh, Pedro can attest to this, right? Like, we can work. Like right now, Pedro is working. If you really think yeah. about it, right? This, yep, he's, exactly. still, he's still working, but this yeah. is another stream, right? So the whole thing is like, yeah, we can work twenty plus hours a day, but being on the road for twenty plus hours a day is dangerous, right? Even yeah. Uber, yeah. even Uber shuts your app down after twelve hours. Yeah. It's like you cannot work. I don't know if that's in every market. But I've you cannot milked work past it. Twelve hours. So, I've milked it to nineteen and a half. So what I'll I'm be saying, honest. what I'm saying, what I'm saying is, all right. So look, it is dangerous, but there there are regulations that if you are doing OTR in a truck, by law you have to take a break. By law, yeah. you know, from driving, and, yes. and if. And, uh, so, all in all, it's dangerous to be working a crazy amount of hours this year. I said, so did I say that anyone should decrease their hustle? No. I said we should be increasing our, our streams of income so we don't have to be on the road. As Thank long. you. That's all I was alluding yeah. to. That, 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 that's, that's what I was going to build to, too. But, but I am here's doing the thing. that. But here's the thing. It's not just about you, Buzz Soda. The thing is, many people... I, I commend Dash and Life Hawaii for putting in that grind, that hustle like he do, right? Um, and any anyone else that does the same, right? Whether they're in the chat, whether it's you, Bud Soda, I commend y'all for putting in that grind. But um, in business, if we're really looking at this like a business, we all should be trying to double and triple our money instead of just being a worker, a workhorse for the apps and waiting for them to send yeah, the, then it's the money that they want to send us when they want to send it to us. We, we, should, we had this. Yeah, I know, I know. But all I'm saying <laughs> is we should be doubling and tripling our money in, in, in ways for us to grow as, as a business. You know, yeah. not just keep on consistently working 18, 20, 21 hours a day, because in the end, it's wear and tear on the body. And eventually it's going to haunt you and it's going to come back to bite you in the ASS down the road. Right now, you you good. You good. Work your hours. Do your thing. I'm not going to tell you what to do. You are your own person. Whoever that's listening to what I'm saying. But in the end, you can't say that we never had this conversation about these hours are long days. And it could come back to haunt you later on. Get your money. Do what you got to do. Your hustle is your hustle. But it's not something I recommend anyone doing for a long period of time. I'm at a point like, okay, I'm not bragging, but I've been pushing catering apps for how long? Yesterday, I made $400.
Today, I made a little over $300. I ain't work half the time that y'all are working. I'm doubling and tripling my money in a lot less time, and I'm driving a lot less miles. And I could make mm -hmm. the kind of money that y'all making. I'll probably make more than y'all if I keep working. But like Bud Soda said, I have young kids. And they got to go back to school tomorrow from Christmas break. Why would I need to be out on the road right now when I already made $300 for the day? I don't need to be. No, not for me. I mean, it just, you know, everyone has their priorities and priorities for this. And. You know, I guess some people want to work 20 hours a day or whatever. And, yeah, you might be able to do that for a while, but you want to have an end goal. And I think that's what um, what Troy was trying to say, you know. There's nothing wrong with the hustle. But if you're not trying to find another way to build yourself where you can get to the point where you can start working less, that's the end goal, at least in my opinion, is you work really hard now and, so you can get to the point where you can listen, enjoy uh, your life. And listen, that, listen, that's the goal. You off, but listen, no, go ahead. 100K shouldn't even be, like, your goal. When I'm working every year, my goal is 150K. Do, do I hit that? No. But you got to think about taxes. Okay, you made 100K, but you take home okay. 70, 80. And it, if you deduct the miles, that might go all the way that, down to 50. You know, it might get cut yeah. down. So, like, you got to think bigger. And you should, and every year, you should want to make more money. You, every year, you should be like, there's no oh, job out there where you are only, where you're making the same thing every year. You're stagnant every year. That is that's 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 the biggest problem with these gig workers that like say, "Oh, I'm a hustler. I've been out here 100 mm -hmm. k You're only making 100 k a year, bro. It's been six years. You're still only making 100 k. <laughs> like, well, well, one thing too that people don't think, and um, I like I said, I respect Dasher for hustling UDM and everybody else and Pedro. But one thing we got to think, and again, this is the reason I've put gig life more as a part time than full time is because. Look what happened last year with the rate cuts. Every year, these companies are going to keep cutting the yep. rates, and you yep. got to work more and more. And that's why I say it's not stable to exactly. trust. It. You exactly. say you can hustle 20 hours, but how long is it every week? Is it going to be that kind of money? Do you know for sure? And I'm not saying I'm not saying W two is the best thing. It doesn't pay always the best, but at least at the end of the day, when you go to bed and clock in, you know what you're going to get. No matter what happens that day, you know what you're going to make. You know, that's just my argument on that. But I, mean, I, I don't like fully still agree with that. I mean, there's go a, ahead. I don't fully agree with that. Like, there's there's benefits to doing gig work. Like, oh, I'm not against yeah, it. I'm just saying, like, doing gig work. Like, I'm me personally. I'm going back to a W two, but it's 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 going to be beneficial in the long term because I'm I'm turning into a trucker, and then it, I right. got a whole two year plan to eventually work for myself. So I'm taking a step back as far as like freedom wise. But it will play it will play out in the long term in two years. I feel like a lot of people in the gig economy, they don't have an escape plan. Like they they just want to keep doing it, doing it and doing it and doing it until they go out there one day and they can't do it no more. And then it's like, where do I go from here? That's you know what, okay, you know yeah. what though? You know what though, Trail? Uh here's the thing. I said in, in the live stream recently, Pedro, a lot of people don't use the gig economy. Well, they use it as a job. Right. OK, everybody make money with it. Right. That's fine. Mm -hmm. But it's supposed to be like if you've never owned a business, you never ran a business, it's supposed to give you the tools that you need to learn how to start. Right. And then you can move on from it or you could use it as a stream of income to make thirty dollars if that's all you need or to to make more than that. It just depends on how busy it is in your market. So it, in order to. You're not going to double and triple your money just being on the road delivering food for an app. If you decide uh -huh. if you decide to utilize the app and start your own business, then you could probably double and triple your money. But you have to take the next step to starting your own and cut out the middleman. That's the Look, only way UDM, you can double and triple your money. Exactly. They keep, they keep, mm -hmm. they keep cutting hey, your hey, money. UDM. Say that. Mm -hmm. It's a good example of a YouTuber. His name is Tat Von. I don't know if, if y'all know who Tat Far is. He was yep. an Instacart dude. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep. He doesn't even do Instacart like that anymore because he doesn't have to because he leveled up his life 
to the point where Instacart is probably only 20 to 10% of his money. And that's how you want to be. That's I want to be that. Exactly. I want to be that guy. 80% is me and the apps are a side thing, basically. I don't right. want the apps to be right. my main. I want, I want those customers myself serving them. They're paying store prices and I'm getting more money for it. So but it's a win-win. At the same time, when you're dedicating so much time to the app life, you're not dedicating enough time to your own business life to, to grow and, and scale your own exactly, business. Exactly, exactly. That, that's what I'm trying to do through the apps, though. I thought that's like kind of the point is you use it step use the apps as a stepping stone toward your own business in life. Either you pile up cash or you work it in such a way as you have yourself, you have personal clientele. You do personal catering runs. Me, mm -hmm. I want to do private grocery pickup and catering runs and even some on demand. And then eventually I want it to be where I'm just sitting back collecting a few bucks and that's a secondary stream of income and I'm doing something else with my money. I'm doing something else full time and focusing my time on that. I want to buy, if I can get some investors together, there's a bar that I can go buy. She wants to retire and go live in a camper for a summer, you know, go tour the country and I could buy it for a sweetheart deal for a less than a third of what that place is worth on market. So if I mm -hmm. can get that, if I can get there, great. I want to, but I don't expect to get there because I do have somewhat realistic expectations, even though you guys think my goals are insane, like $150,000 and 750 a day, all that blah, 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 blah. But like I set those goals on purpose because I want to achieve this. I want to not do this my whole life and have to make a $10 stack run. Like right. But what UDM, what were UDM saying and, and Trill and other people, I think, is if you want to make 150 Bud Soda, you might be able to do that with food delivery, maybe, but you're, you're mm -hmm. working harder, not smarter, right? You can make. Yeah, you got to do other things. Yeah. You might be better yeah. off the, the, making, square, the, the, you the might, four square contra. You might be better off making $60,000 a year for the next three years and use that extra time that you will be dashing to build something that, that way, five years from now, you're making 150. But it's not. Yeah. 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 So it's from, it's I'm from only. The economy, it's from this side hustle, it's from this business, it's from this. Whatever that is, there's a, a million ways to make money, right? I'm not a so, guru, but so here, you know, you have to you have to sometimes be willing to 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 turn an app off. I, in my opinion, you got to be willing to turn an app off and do a loss leader, right? And make less that week or that year, so that it will benefit you long term because you're exactly, growing exactly, exactly. Grow, growing, that's yeah. what I'm doing. I'm you're literally doing plant. that week. Yeah, you're growing a plant. You're not going to be able to eat that week. But it's going to be able to make you the, that 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 tree is going to give you some apples down the line, right? So mm -hmm. I think a lot of us just want to grab that apple, grab that apple, grab that apple. But that's not our it's tree. A, yeah, that's not our tree, right? We're taking from an apple that's not our tree. So you know, anyway, yeah. everybody say hi to Seth. She's in the chat. Or, or in the, on the hey, chat. hey, how's it going? Hey, what's going on? Hello, I was just letting you talk. I'm, I'm absorbing information. Ain't yeah, nothing wrong so, with that. <laughs> so what I'm thinking is I'm not going out during the afternoons much anymore at all. And even if lunchtime it don't hit by 1 p.m., I go home and sit and wait for something good to come and do some research or do some reading or whatever while I'm doing that. And I've got to figure out how to brainstorm and do other things like we've been talking about on the phone. So I just think that there's better things, yes, you can do with your time a lot of people don't utilize things properly and they just uh just watching something on netflix for three hours so no don't spend that three hours on netflix do something that's satisfying towards you and set out three hours of your time later after you accomplish that goal to go watch netflix as a reward because delayed gratification is something they don't teach anymore everyone wants it now instant gratification you got to wait for that apple tree to grow, like Pedro was saying. So that's just yep. how I look at things. I don't know about the rest of you, I mean, anyone here on the panel or in the chat, but you can't just look, oh, darn, that sucks. Da, 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 da. That's just short sighted thinking, very low brain energy. You got to think bigger, bigger things. I want to I wanna run a restaurant. I want to run a car dealership. I want to run my own 
auto repair shop in that and a car, you know, car detailing through it, whatever. I have a million business ideas in my head that I want to grow. I want to be as successful as Charlie Capura, who owns a very successful conglomerate of dealerships around here. And the guy is probably worth with his family, almost a billion dollars. Yeah, but most of, you're not going to do that order and do a delivery for DoorDash. I, I know yeah. that. That's yeah. why I'm growing just, other cha- other channels, other channels. You're not going to do that just doing DoorDash, but no. you can use it as a stone to get there. I know. Yeah, I, I'm with you on that. Okay, you're talking about That's using where, it as a stone, right? Yeah. Using it as a stone. Like, How can that happen? Okay, let's say, okay, let's say we in May, right? And DoorDash lowers the base pay to fifty cent. Yep. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and 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 <laughs> you you that that fifty dollars you're gonna lose probably fifty dollars a day off that easily. Maybe more yeah. depending on how much you drive. Yeah. If it goes it's down, like, if it goes down to fifty cents, you're probably realistically you're probably losing more like ten to fifteen dollars a day, not fifty. But I mean, still, yeah, over the course of a week. Of the that's year, a lot. That's still or a lot. someone like they're they're talking like someone like me who's out there many many hours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, still, I probably the full time drivers it affects more, but yeah. So it's, it's, so a lot of people don't like. I look at these food apps, DoorDash, Uber Eats, Grubhub, as mostly filler, and I rely on the others to bring me my own streams. In fact, I've been sacrificing some to maybe work the grocery side a little more so I can potentially get more clients. And like the more people that like me over there, that's when I open up my dumpling, that's more people I can get on my rolls and them away from Instacart. So Mm -hmm. like, yeah, I have these apps to thank for those customers, as Roy said in a previous conversation a few weeks ago, but we're out here doing the legwork. We're the independent contractors. We're allowed to advocate for ourselves. So if you're not willing to do the legwork, I had someone in a, I think it was on one of your videos, Pedro, you're crazy for, what do you mean personal clients and catering and da 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 I'm like, that's the way to go because you can grow yourself long-term. You can't rely on these apps forever. Yeah, DoorDash might be great for you now, but like you said, they're cutting the base pay. Just think two years from now when they might cut it to a dollar or less. No, they're gonna do it. We all know it. Think about this, but so how much has the base pay gotten cut since you started? Since everyone Uh, started, three dollars in twenty twenty one. I'm saying I remember like five six years ago hearing someone working in uh 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 Boise Idaho getting fifteen dollars per order because DoorDash was trying to to corner the market over there. Five six years ago, imagine Jeez. getting fifteen dollars per oh. order. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Now that look at what it is now, two dollars per order. Yeah. There's still yeah. tiny yeah. zones they're trying to break out in that there's potential that they still pay three to five dollar peak bay to get someone to come do that order. That's usually not too far from a big zone. And these these apps are smart. You don't think these CEOs talk? <laughs> They go, they go, they go and talk together. In, you know, DoorDash and Instacart and Uber, all those CEOs know that we all do all the apps, and that oh well, someone might come here for your app. I'm going to try to grow over here too, and we're all going to be richer for it. But I like, I don't, don't be the rich. Don't be the. I don't. I don't. But go ahead. What, I don't think most what, people what Pedro? Have, have more than maybe one or two other apps. I think the average DoorDash driver. Is just DoorDash. That's my opinion because there's so many yeah. partners. I think the average person that is DoorDash, that's the only app they got. Maybe they got Uber 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 Uber. and they do it very little bit amount of time. It, I think, it, we it, the, yeah, I think for the, the ones who don't do it full time, yeah, yeah, for, yeah. I'm just saying, I'm just, I think most people that do DoorDash, if we're talking, or or most people that just do rideshare or do Instacart, they got one app. I think most people have one app. That's yeah, you can't do that though. That's my opinion. No, you, you I think they said my well, in my Instacart market too. Came, Instacart came out and said is like the average shopper works twelve hours a week, which is what two three hours a night for like three or four days a week. Right, right. So uh, they're probably doing a few runs on a Saturday. Or maybe. Or yeah, they, they work yeah. six hours on Saturday and work an hour or two here and there. Yeah, they're not like they're not like us where we got all these apps or UDMs mastering the catering and he uses DoorDashes. A filler, like that's like next level. That's like king shit. You know what I'm saying? Like 
that's like a whole nother department. Right? Yeah, m- most but people are on our level. That's when the shit, the stuff he's doing, that's when you start bragging. That's when you want right, to right, right. Like, my, my I made four hundred dollars in six hours, motherfucker. Like, you know what I'm saying? Turn a one app. I want making money on one app. That's most I, most gig workers. That's how they work. What UDM's doing? I want to be there by next year. Can and I then ask a, after, can go I ahead. Ask everybody, a question. This is a serious question for everybody, including uh, those in the chat. If you were to work twelve hours, and I'm using twelve hours because Uber Eats they cut you off at twelve hours. They don't let you work more than that unless you get six hours of rest. If you work twelve hours on just DoorDash, not multi apping, how much money would you make? Less than a hundred. Shoot, you'd be lucky if you make a hundred, hundred fifty in my market. Yeah, that's that's any zone. <laughs> Unless it's a very busy military payday weekend is the only exception in my market. Now, I know Dash of Life, you making like 600, right? You work in, uh, maybe, maybe maybe not in, in 12 hours. How much would you make in 12 hours? Is he still there? I'll make 350 bucks. 350 in, in 12 hours. It does fall 30. That's 12 hours. That's not bad. Bro, that's no way you flexing that, bro. Almost thirty okay. an hour. I'm not. I'm not here to convince you, bro. You you can you can try to tell me about my twelve life. hours three fifty. That's normal. Can I say something? You can try to tell me. Go ahead. Can I say something? Yes. Go ahead. So if, if you're on an app for twelve hours and you're only making a hundred dollars, you shouldn't be on the app. You shouldn't be fact. working. That's a fact. Yeah, but I yeah. I don't say I don't that's single hours. That's, that's why. But it's not about single hours. It's not about single hours. It's about making sure that your time is profitable out there. Exactly. Exactly. My time is profitable, though. But Just if you're making hundred dollars, let me hold on. Hold I don't on, have it on, on for the full hold twelve on, hours. Hold on. Hold on. How is it profitable if you're making only a hundred dollars in twelve hours? I just wanted to know. That's you're not even gas. I just wanted to it's know. Not worth it. so, Everybody so, that, so, that's talking hold, about hold, DoorDash, hold if they hold. made twelve, if they work twelve hours, I just wanted to know how lucrative DoorDash is in 2024 for everyone. That's all I wanted to know. I mean, let me let me say something. Well, I don't, I don't work DoorDash like well, that. Let, I, I don't let, let Ron talk. talk. Oh, Ceci, you got you got the floor. Go ahead. No, I don't. I don't have. I don't have. I don't have that much experience with DoorDash like Boots does. So he he can explain it more. Yeah. If on, yeah. on the DoorDash perspective, go ahead. Anytime I say something, there's always a pushback. Right? This guy don't even know me. He telling me there's no way this and the third. I'm not here to dispel no rumors. I'm not here to prove nothing to you and nobody else. I know what I make. I know what my life is. The fact of the matter is, I get out here. I make the money. Whether what my end goals are, what, what what my other plans are, that's really need not to be said. I do it on one app. It's no cap, whether you believe it or not. You got it your way. I got it my way. I'm going to do it my way. You're going to do it your way, whether you believe me or not. Nothing nobody going to say is going to stop me from doing it the way I'm doing it. I have my reasons. I have my means to my madness. That's just the way it is. You don't have to believe it. Like I said, you don't have to believe it. I'm not even I'm not even wanting you to believe, but I'm still doing it, whether you believe it or not. And I'm not going to stop preaching my way because you say so. Like I said, I don't know you. You don't know me, but you show judging my life. It went from me working 16 hours to 21. hours. I never said that. I said I could have been with home and I made four hundred and fifty dollars already. So if you ain't doing the math, it's eight o'clock. It's eight thirty. I could have been went home. I'm using one app and I'm doing it. It doesn't matter how I'm doing it. I'm doing it. But to you, you factor in all this and the third things that I know about. But well, it is what it is. I can make three fifty in twelve hours. That's just the bottom line. And I'm not going. I'm and not going back down. I can make three fifty in twelve hours. And okay, I, I understand that, and I <laughs> but understand that. But the is. fact, but the fact, it doesn't matter what you're telling me. It doesn't matter what you're telling me because I'm gonna do it my way, bro. We I know what you you're talking about. Five years, my boy. We are, we're, we're going to see where I'm at. We're going to see. And I'm going to show you. That's all I'm saying, bro. I'm going to show you. Just because you believe what society tell you and all this, that, and the third, I don't think like that, bro. I, that's, I, look I think you, different. I look at you like a trucker deadheaded from, from okay. California to Augusta, okay. Georgia, making no money. Okay. That's how I look at you. 
Okay, that's fine. That's how you look at me. Others don't. You can have your opinion about me all you want. Others don't look at me like that. So you can have your opinion. I'm glad. I'm, at least I, I don't know where you've been, but I know where you're coming from. So it is what it is. But you one of them ones that's always negative about somebody doing what they got to do for themselves. Ain't nobody I don't have negative. to leave you. I think you, wait, bro, wait, wait, wait. You are, you're, 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 you're preaching, negative, bro. Uh, you're preaching. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I ain't preaching too much. All right. I'm preaching. It's not you're crazy. Because why, crazy why, why, okay. Tell me why. Tell me you why it's crazy. You call somebody lazy for not working 16 hours. It's I know. I never said. I never said nobody's lazy for not working 16. That said, never came out my you mouth. Said verbatim. Verbatim. Dashers don't work hard enough. If you know that you they gotta don't, do this, so and so, you should be out there. They don't work hard let, enough. They don't work hard enough. They don't. Well, they don't understand that. Have you thought that some people can't? I want you to go make three fifty in Dallas right now. Just I hear it. I just hear excuses. Please do it. Well, I want. I want to. Well, I want to know real then, quick. Then, what? then I then then I do it. Then what, what you gonna say when I do it? What you gonna I say when do I do it? Hours, Why would like you, you said, limit? Right? No, what? You what? 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 Hours, right? No. What? So why? 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 I don't want you to do it in twenty-one in, hours. No, in, in, in my market, in my in my market right now, in my market, in my zone, I can make three fifty in twelve hours. I never said I can go to Dallas and make three fifty in twelve hours. Oh my gosh! You made three fifty in the big tourist state. Oh my gosh! What? Anybody can do that, bro. What, bro? I still can go to you Dallas have to and have make a hustle still to do it. I still can go to Dallas and make 350. That's not negating the Please fact that I can it. do it, bro. bro. I want you to do it. Damn. Bro. Please don't do it. Then, then, then when I, then when I do it, what? Then when I do it, when I do it, what you gonna say, bro? Oh, what are you boy. gonna say when I do it? Hold, 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 hold on, guys. Easy. Hold hold on. Time out. Oof. Time out. Hold up, y'all. Listen, I love. I like the back and forth and the passion. I think you guys are talking about <laughs> things that we need to be hearing. New dashers, old dashers. It's a matter of opinion, markets, perspective. I, I, I think challenging one another on certain ways that we look at the world or the apps differently, I think that's great. I want to say that. But I do want to give each of you guys kind of like a, a, a minute or so, some final thoughts. I'll start with a funny person. Then we'll go to Jerry, Dasher Life, UDM, Barcelona, Trill, and we'll end with Nomadic, if you guys don't mind. Just give me some final thoughts on, on you know, tonight's topics we're kind of all over but you know it, it's good um because your boy's got a massive headache right and we could if, if i allow we'll probably be out here all night and i, I can't do that listen I, I know we all got things to do in the morning but i want to start with my man uh funny person up there just give me some uh, final thoughts or parting shots or whatnot um to talk about what we were talking about the original part of the show of no tip customers and everything yeah I think, um, you know, I just want to say shortly that I do disagree on one aspect of the people that are like on EBT and stuff. I think it's a great service for them and I'm not knocking it, but I think DoorDash should compensate us for that because people like that. I know they're struggling. I think it's a good feature. Maybe they don't have a car or something. And they're going through hard times. And But uh, people that don't tip that order the McDonald's just as a luxury, I think you're a scummy person when you have the money, just, just straight up. I think that's just messed up. That, that's my honest thoughts. I think you make a good point about the the, the uh, pay more if it's not if it's coming from a place or right or can't really tip or they're not gonna you know like like I think I think it's a really good point. Jerry, some final yeah. thoughts. Well, first of all, to the original topic, fuck that guy. I hope that Keurig falls on his head. But anyway, <laughs> sorry, that's, that's my, that's Damn, my tell us how you really <laughs> <laughs> All right, now I got that out of the way. But uh, you know, I mean. I actually completely agree. You know, I, I'm not arguing. Um, uh, it's Dash your life. Why? Right? Sorry, my phone's far away from me. Um, I'm not arguing his hustle. I'm like, dude, you can do that. I, I'm happy for you. But me, I can only do it for about maybe five, about five hours. And then I have to stop. I have to take a break. I have too much shit to do late at night and have, you know, I have kids. I got dogs. You know, my mom's sick. I help take care of her. You know, so I can't devote my time all of my time to these apps like you guys can but i mean this is actually on my first year doing this and um you know it's actually opened up a lot i actually full-time it really and because i make enough it, it i'm not trying to reach like you know six figures you know which i mean that's cool I mean, if i could do that that would be awesome and i'm sure i could if i gave it the time that you guys do but, but that's not your goal that's not why you're in this game 
You don't need. Yeah, it. no. I mean, it's it's. I have flexibility. I can do things I want to do. I'm. I've always loved martial arts as a kid, and I'm now actually back in it. Um, uh, me and my daughter, we do tournaments together in Taekwondo, and um, you know we have a special bond over that. And I would never have got to done that had I stuck with uh, W2s because my line of uh, work was always cooking. I was a cook, and if you wanted to, the hours, it was I replaced. It was always nighttime, always nighttime or late night. We can you know, work in, yeah, and I don't want to do that shit anymore. You know, I, I, I'd rather work in the morning. I do breakfast and lunch and I make just enough. Like today I made, uh, on a Saturday, I made 150 and I only worked for about five hours. You know, that's not bad, you know, and I didn't do a lot of far driving. I was, I am in the large order program, so I got to stay 75% or, oh, so I'm sorry, 70th percent or above, but you know, once I get to 73, I start cherry picking like crazy. Like, you know, now we can get back down to that 70, start hit that 69. Then I'm like, okay, well, I better lay some clown shoes and get ready to take some trash. But, you know, it it is what it is. But it always balances out for me. You know, and it just, I like this work. I like doing this so much better. I, I think this is 100% a real job. That the that bullshit about this, get a real job. Yeah, we, we all hear that crap all the time. But you know what? Fuck those people. Who cares? You know? You make your money your way. I'll make my money my way. All right. It's simple as that. Well okay, I ran on too long. I'm sorry. Uh, Dash your life boots, aka Ron. All those, all those things. What you got, man? Some final thoughts. Um. First, well, first and foremost, I never said anything about anybody work like I work. That's number one. Number two is. <laughs> All I'm asking people is, or saying to people is, if you believe in yourself, you can make what you want on the app. And no matter what market you're in, you yeah, just got to believe in yourself. You got to put the time and the work in, and you can make what you want. No matter how you do it, don't do it my way. Don't do it Pedro way. Don't do it UDM's way. Don't do it nobody else's way but your way. Make it your way, and you're going to succeed. You're going to have people who don't believe it, which is fine. You're going to have people who do. It is what it is. I'm not going to stop doing what I'm doing. And I'm not going to tell you how to do what you do. I'm just saying put a little more time, effort into it, and you'll have better results. That's it. Mr. UDM, any final thoughts, my friend? Yeah. Um, well, this was a very interesting live. I came uh, closer towards uh, when everyone was talking about um, not the main point. I, I didn't even really yeah. know the main point, <laughs> to be honest. Listen, uh, listen. I'll, you gotta, you gotta like go back when you have time tomorrow. <laughs> a guy came up, and it's a customer. He lives in a nursing home. Me and him had a good little talk. So if you, you could like yeah. two at that on YouTube. Yeah, it was great, dude. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm gonna definitely go back and watch. But yeah. um, uh, I guess uh, one thing, one thing I'll never tell anyone to do is how to make the money that they know how to make in their market. I can only give my experiences, but the experiences that I have, I would want everyone to experience, right? Um, when when it comes down to, I haven't had this conversation with Dash Life Hawaii, I've had it with Bud Soda, I've had it with you, Pedro, about how much more you can make just using catering, the catering apps, right? Versus just doing DoorDash. And I'm not, putting catering over DoorDash or anything like that. It's just an avenue or an option to make more for the least amount of time while you're out on the road. I remember um, as final thought, as part of my final thoughts, I want to put this out there to everyone that's willing to hear me out. There's a driver that I remember four years ago the fact that he was sitting around for as long as he was in his car caused him to get blood clots in his legs. And these blood clots, he had to take blood thinners and all of the above. I didn't even know it was possible to go through that. You know what I'm saying? So what I'm, when I'm, what I'm thinking about is not just the fact that I have young kids and I need to have time for my family and all that. It's a health risk sitting on your ass all day and and just declining or riding around in your car all day 
because this is your line of work and you're going to do this forever, however many years you want to do this at a stepping stone or whatever, right? It's, it's something, it could be a major health risk, not just a danger falling asleep at the wheel or anything like that. You could get blood clots in your legs or wherever, whatever part of your body by yeah. sitting still for long periods of time. Without the blood flow. Without the blood flow. Okay, I am no doctor. I am no, I didn't go to school for this knowledge. I'm just sharing someone else's experience that they shared with me four or five years ago. And I did, they was a dasher and they couldn't make any money. And they were seeking, trying to find help on what to, should they do next. And in this case, if y'all not willing to listen to what I'm saying to you, okay, about working less, making more, doubling and tripling your money, then this is the same group of people you will then try to come to and say, hey, I need help. I am going to start a GoFundMe because I cannot work like I used to because of these health conditions that I'm now suffering from. So all I'm saying is wear and tear on the body. Do what y'all got to do. I'm going to do me. Y'all do y'all. But I'm, I'm just trying to be a brother and trying to tell everyone there's, a, there's an opportunity to make more and drive less. You can go on your vacations. You can do whatever you wish to do with the money you make. But there's a better way to do what you're doing. Even what I'm doing right now, there's a better way to do it. And if there's a better way, I feel each and every last one of us in our own way should be trying to do it the better way. 2024, 2028, 2032, doesn't matter. We should be trying to find a better way to do what we're doing now to make more than what we make now. That's all I really got to say. Thank you for that. But Soda, you got five seconds. Go ahead. Five seconds. Get out of here. <laughs> no, get up, walk around, pump that blood, get it moving. Pedro, come on. Really? Um, but like the no tipping stuff, that's whatever. But as far as working too much, just doing these apps, yeah, that could be a negative at the same time. I mean, if the money's there, the fish are budding, great. But if not, do something more productive with your time. That's what I'm advocating for. Like, I think uh, Ron of uh, Dash Life Hawaii says he's got five other things going on. You got, what, three or four other streams besides YouTube and DoorDash. So it's always great to have more coming in, more in your back pocket and long-term plans and take that damn self-responsibility. A lot of people don't take that. You know, like either invest towards your future or put away toward it. Do something. Do both if you can. So I'd like to be able to do both. I'm doing one right now, but I need to be doing the other more. And the the things that we do out here, if it's just not worth it, hey, I'm looking at like InstaWork and Winolo and looking at temp temp shifts. It's gonna be have me up on my feet eight hours a day. Um, I asked my YouTube community. And they said, yes, go try to work, do that for a day. I'm going to try it as an experiment. It makes good contact because I'll share my experience. And then I'm productive for eight hours of the day. Plus, it's a market I know I can go work, you know, get out of there, go after dinner. I'm out here trying to struggle to make 15 an hour beating my car to death. So why not just sit somewhere for eight hours and do that? And a lot of people are saying, seriously, you're going to go back to W2? Swallow your pride a little bit, guys. If you're making 15 an hour until it's dinner time, do something m more productive that's not going to beat your car and beat your body up. Like, I've beat my body up literally doing hard physical labor, but this is the opposite where you're sitting in your car for long periods of time. I want to get up right now and get moving because my back's killing me. My legs are starting to throb. I need to move. So I'll bid you guys a farewell tonight. I said my piece. Go make your money, guys. Thank you, Bud Soda. Uh, Troy, what you got, my man? I feel like at the end of the day, how you make your money is nobody else's concern. I agree with that. But preaching it in almost like a flexing manner, like you can do this and do that there, do that, do this and do that here, when it's not factual, it's not 
<laughs> like you can't go, you can't go to a small town in South Carolina and make five hundred dollars a day. It's just not possible. I feel like at the end of the day, your goal should be to work less, make more, and have multiple streams of income while being healthy. That's all I got to say. I, I spoke my piece. Thank you. Appreciate it. And we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna end it with nomadic geeky con mom. Give final thoughts. Hello, thank you for having me again. Um, in my perspective, um, I've been in this economy since 2015. I went into delivery work as a supplemental income. Um, I've made it work for me, just like probably everybody else has made it work for them. You can sustain it if you want to sustain it as you know, whatever sustainability it is for you, you know, because everybody has their own price limit. Um, yes, there's health risk, but there's health risk with every single job that's out there, even if you're sitting at a desk all day. Yep. You can make it work for you. Um, I don't know what the topic was when I came in because I woke up at 12 o'clock <laughs> and saw everybody was here. <laughs> so, and then I saw boots on here. So that's why I came. But this, this job, yes, it could be stressful. Yes, there's times that you're not making any money. Yes, but there's plenty of other options out there than just doing delivery work. You know, mm. it, it's, not, it's not only that that's out there to make money. And I think that's the problem that everyone has, that they cannot find other avenues of income. And yes, I'm always thinking about my future. I'm always thinking about my retirement. I'm always making sure that I have that work-life balance because at the end of the day, you know, I work around my family's schedule. Because that's what I do. I, I need to be a part of their life just as much as I need to work for them. Mm -hmm. So is every everybody has their own reasons of why they're out here. And everybody has their own limit of what they want to make. But that doesn't mean it's not possible. Okay? I guess well, that's, well said. that's all. Well said. Listen, I appreciate everybody that came in. Uh, shout out. The customer that came up earlier, uh, mm -hmm. fun little probably 20, 25 minute convo we had with him. And I appreciate all the, the super chats, all the thumbs up. Appreciate the chat. Appreciate the different perspectives. Um, y'all have a great night. I'm going to do a little, I'm going to kick y'all off and I'm going to do a little, a little talking for like a minute, but I appreciate y'all. Thank y'all. Thank you. All right. See you later. All right, guys. All right, thank later. You. Thanks guys. Bye. Later, Pedro. See you, brother. Talk to you later. All right, Jerry. All right, all right. Man, I feel like we had two shows tonight. So if you've been here from the, since the beginning, you're an OG. We're almost at four hours, right? Uh, shout out to you. But we, we had two different shows, and I like that. Organically, it went where it went, and there's nothing wrong with that. We're gig workers. We have opinions. We work in different markets. We have a different perspective. We have different goals. We have a different way that we are sharing ideals. Um, it's good. I like it. Um, we definitely had two different types of shows today. So I definitely have some things I can clip out of here. I think that conversation with me and that customer, definitely gonna take that and make that his own little video and put that out there. Um, I, I really like that he shared his perspective of a customer that has a tough time with DoorDash. Like he's had bad experiences, but then we gave him his reasons why that might be happening. So I thought that was really good. Um, plan on doing this again. I, I want to hear more from consumers. Because I educated him on some things, excuse me, tonight. And he educated us a little bit on his perspective, right? Um, so I definitely want to have the consumers on more. And sometimes I think when I do it, it's going to get fiery. It got a little fiery tonight, but it's still respectful. And other times it could be probably a little more peaceful. But at the end of the day, I think we, you know, it's fun to understand their perspective. Because I just don't, and I'm not going to, I'm not trying to change minds, but, but, I don't mind calling out the like some of these customers are just be they be BSing and we know it, right? 
Uh, and some of us drivers need to do better though too, right? Some of it, some things fall on us. Um, you guys are fantastic. I appreciate y'all. I got a massive headache. I don't know where it came from. It's just weird. I don't get them that often. Maybe it's the light right here. I'm trying something new. But I got to go to sleep. I got to say that right now. I appreciate all y'all so much. If you're watching on the replay, I mean, this is a f almost four hour or whatever. You could do it on 2x speed on YouTube. Uh, but if you've already got to this point, I mean, I respect. Uh, I'll see y'all tomorrow. There will be a video tomorrow. Um, I do have one exciting thing I think I'll share with you guys this week. I think you guys would be happy to hear it. So you guys are absolutely amazing. Have a great night. Be safe if you're out driving. Be safe. Peace.